Hey everyone, for those that don't know me, my name is Hirsch. I'm a longtime Venom player, having played Exert and Venom since release, as well as in Plus R, both prior to Exert's release and in his recent rollback era. So I have a lot of experience with this character over the years. I've done well locally, regionally, and at majors, and would consider myself a strong Venom player at this point, having as much experience as I do in playing as long as I have. This video will serve as a Comprehensive guide to Exert Venom as I'll be going over his entire kit and how things work, meaning his movement, normals, throw, specials, and supers, as well as some basic combos, basic Oki, and his BME combos at the end. I'll also be putting some resources at the end, including channels to follow and players to watch. While I'm going to be going over a lot of stuff in detail, there will be some like real nitty gritty stuff that I'll be leaving out on purpose, as this is meant to be an introduction to your primer to how Venom works and the various properties things have. and those real like minute things about Venom you don't have to really worry about right now as just focus on getting the hang of it first. I recommend you guys have the game open alongside you if you can so that way you can try things out as I explain them and you get to feel how everything works alongside the visual of me doing it for you and explaining to you as we're going along. So I'll make a note first that Venom is not hard to get the hang of. Basic Venom is actually pretty straightforward. It's just that a lot of people fall into the common trap of like going straight to the deep end doing try all the sick nasty stuff all the advanced combos or whatever into all that stuff and really you only need to be doing all that you just do basic stuff into these first get the hang of things and then as you get comfortable with things you add on to it as you go so don't jump straight to the end before you have the understanding of the beginning Another thing I want to know real quick before jumping into it is that Venom is a charge character and a motion character. He has both of them. So, Stinger and this horizontal projectile. Both verges are back forward charge, so Sonic Booms. And then this move, Parker's Red, is a down up charge. So, yeah, Sonic Booms and Flash Kicks alongside his motions of everything. So, that's something you have to get used to. You still want to always get in the habit of charging all the time. And that seems, if you're not, familiar, if you're not, if you're not comfortable with charging already, that may seem hard, but it's really just a matter of remembering to do it. So you get real comfortable with it real fast. All right, so first up we're gonna get into is just the basic strategy of Venom. What you want to do with this character? He can zone. His zoning is strong. His pressure is strong. His mid range is pretty good too. Your main goal is to zone, keep him away from you until you have an opportunity to get in, and start pressure. And then once you start pressure, you go in, do what you got to do. Oops. And you see your pressure stops working. All right, stops working. I back up. I try zone again until I get in. And that's generally your, your uh, flow as Venom. Zone until you can get in. Start your pressure. Get your mix-ups if you can. Once you start getting pushed away to around like here on your OK, so let's say you get someone like this and you can't do much, don't want to spend the meter for whatever reason or... You try to wait for a better spot. You can back up and start sending up again and basically hop in and out of pressure and zoning. His throw game is also very strong. I'll go into this throw later, but very vital to Venom. Because he is also a very heavy pressure character. He has strong mix ups, and you mix in the throw in that as well. It really keeps the opponents guessing. So that's the basic overview of what you want to do with him in neutral. Just the quick and dirty overview. Zone until you get in. Pressure mix up while you can. Once you can tell that pressure mix up phase of it's over, hop back out zone and rinse and repeat. All right. Next up, we're just gonna go into his movement. Final for the most part is pretty standard movement: double jump, super jump, air dash forward, air dash back. Has a run, pretty standard speed on run. He has a back dash that's very good actually. As you can see, it's pretty fast. It is in fully involved in the first seven frames, so you can use it to like back dash through certain pressure, certain strings. Uh, that's kind of a universal thing in Exit in general and then older Guilty Gears. Oh, actually, all Guilty Gears strive less so because they, they made it less involved in back dashes in general, but you can back dash through a lot of stuff. It's pretty fast, very useful for that. Um, as far as his basic movement goes, that's pretty much it. He has pretty standard movement for the most part. He also has a teleport, which will... I'll get into that more later when I get to the specials. 
But this the teleport, when nothing's on the screen, it will send him straight up. He cannot jump out of the teleport without doing something first. It was about jump slime, but we'll get into that later. He can, however, air dash. So there's more stuff to the. Oh, there's more stuff to the teleport that I'll get into later. But for the most part, pretty basic movement with the addition of a teleport. Now we are going to start again into his normals. So for his normal section, we're going to do all the normals. Every standing, every crouching, every command, every jump normal. For each button. So right now we're going to start with the, the P normals. This is 5P. Uh, the main thing you're going to do with this button is hit balls with it. And you can hit balls with it at a different heights depending on when you want to do it. That's the main, that's going to be the main purpose of this button. As far as the 5P goes, it's pretty slow at the 7 frames. But it's got pretty good range on it and the hitbox on it is better than it would seem because it goes pretty far. Like around that tip area is where the hitbox goes to. So in certain circumstances, like for against Slayer's Mappa Punch, for example, you can use 5P as like a safe counter, a safe low commit counter poke to something like that. So you don't get caught up in like a big recovery or something like a 6P or like a 5H or something. And use it kind of as a safe counter poke. Otherwise, you're mainly going to be using it as a ball hit. You can do that in pressure as well, but you're usually not going to do it more than like the first hit. And it is also jump cancelable. So you can use that for certain purposes, which I'll get into when the time comes. But mainly, yeah, this is going to be primarily for hitting balls. And it was very good at that because you cover that horizontal space, you can vary the time you hit the ball a lot. Get it high, get it low. And that's the main purpose of 5P. Next up we have 2P. Basically the same. This is a mid hit, it's not a low hit. As you can see, that's not a low. Where that where is that is. It's a mid hit. Actually, let me do this. There we go. It's a mid hit. It's mainly used to hit balls that are like lower down. Uh what's the formation? So like 5P will miss this ball right here, but it'll hit 2P would hit. And that's really the main use you're going to have for 2P. It is the same speed as 5P, 7 frames. Um, and yeah, that's prim primarily what you can use it for. You can also like it, use it as a start like poke to like try to bait something out like that. If they're trying to maybe dead angle or burst, you can use that that way. And there's also jump cancelable as well. So in the same way as 5P, you can go like 5P into overhead, you can do 2P into overhead as well, or just 2P into escape. It's not used that often for those purposes, but it's an option there. But yeah, primary function to hit it when the balls are low. Next up is your JP, also 7 frames. Uh, this, is, this, along with his JS, are the fastest air normals. It's a very good air terror, as you see it hits like right in front of Venom. So you can kind of like, if you think you're going to kind of judge kind of like jump in a certain spot, you can like preemptively do that and get like a little baby combo. So let's, let's do that. I don't know. So you can do like something like that to catch them in the air. If you just think you're trying to stop their approach, you can do like that to prevent them from getting in. And even though that kind of stuff doesn't amount to a ton of damage, it does frustrate your opponents to not like have like little spaces here and there blocked off from them. So it's definitely worth doing. Otherwise than that, mainly used for air to airs. It also hit uh, air balls vertically as well, so it does. It's the same thing as 5P and 2P, just in the air where it'll hit balls that way. Um, it is all jump cancelable, so you can do that if you need to as well. Uh, yeah, pretty straightforward button. All, all in all, I'm very good at uh, interacting with opponents in the air, stopping the approaches, being a good preemptive button. Pretty good overall. Now, on to 6P. This is his dedicated anti air button. It's very fast at 7 frames. It's, pro it's one of the best 6Ps, if not the best 6P in the game. Because how fast it is and how good the hitbox is on it. Um, it has a lot of upper body invul. Uh, let's see, let's just do this. That's a little slow, but you get the picture. Uh, let me try it again. So, a lot of 6Ps can do that, but 
his goes a little bit lower than that too, so it's really good for anti purposes. Again, it's very fast at 7 frames, it's probably one of the fastest 6Ps there is. The hitbox on it is very good. So if you look around the tip of the pool cue, it, the hitbox actually extends uh, to like right where like the window part is, the silver on the window. It's about where the hitbox extends, so it is slightly disjointed as well. Oops. So it's slightly disjointed as well, making its extended range a lot uh, better than you would think initially. It is this dedicated anti-air. It's very good at doing that. Uh, let's go into that. Let's just jump forward. So a lot of times, you can just give me your anti-air button. You see it's very fast. It is jump cancelable as well, which gives it a lot of opportunity for convertibility off of your anti-air. Uh, you can knock down from it from like basically any height by doing a base combo of like four, uh, six P, J P J H, and that one that will work for most ranges, and that will knock down for most range, most heights that you're going to be doing it at. It's so, like that was too far, but that that was like still pretty far. I'm like, sizably far away from him. Oops. So that's pretty far away for an anti-air to connect. Like in the later portion of the anti air, most characters can't convert off their anti airs from that far. At least they're 6Ps anyway. But you are able to at least get a small combo into a knockdown. And then add on P set into JD, and you get a nice little meaty pressure for your troubles. So even at the most basic convertibility off of 6P, you get a really nice situation for yourself. And again, that'll work for most ranges. Of course, you know. Uh, character hurt boxes are bigger and smaller depending on certain things. So maybe from farther out, it won't work on some characters. Well, for other characters, but really around like this height, this uh, not high, this uh, length away from them, you're pretty solid on getting a knockdown and hitting. And that's like basically half the screen away from where they started jumping, which is pretty good. Just even that by itself. You can also Gatling 6P into close slash. So. Let me make this guy standing, so you can go six. Oops, go six P close slash or six P six H, and those are the main galleons you're gonna be using. Close slash you're gonna be using in like uh, the again the jumping. Well, you won't use both in the jumping situation, but close slash you're gonna be using more so when you're closer, as it gives like more of a because close slash is multi hitting normal. It gives you more of like a buffer to confirm what you want to do, whereas when you're farther out, you kind of just have to, like commit that you're gonna hit. So let's have a jump. Oops. So do that. So you can do two as a close slash into the JD or JH into a knockdown. Same type of Oki you can do into that as a basic kind of Oki. And really, if you're closer, that would be preferred to do. Just the close slash does like protocol just a little bit better. It's not. It's a slightly more damaging. Well, not enough to be like a huge difference maker. But really, it's that added security of having those extra hits to confirm what you're doing and be able to get the knockdown closer to. However, be warned if you try to do like farther out, oh, let's see. you'll get the far slash instead and that will mess up the combo too. So keep it in mind for when you're closer to do that than when you're farther out. And if you don't even want to mess with and the closer farther, doesn't matter where you are in the screen or how close you are to them, that will always work. That was too high, but that will always work. JH will not knock down from a certain height. But most of the time, you're going to be fine knocking down. Let's see if I can... It's like, that's not going to knock down. Because that was too high for the JH. But around... Around like this height... She will knock down. Which is basically like normal jump height. Like around... Like that high. So most of the time, you're going to be good on a knockdown. If you do it higher up, JDH doesn't knock down. I'll get more time when we get to JH. He also has 6P6H. Uh, I have tech on. This is not a natural combo. It gatlings, but it doesn't combo on non counter hit. On counter hit, of course, it does combo. So, boom, boom, that's a guaranteed combo. You'll see a lot of Venom players kind of just dial this in a lot because people will not react properly to like the first of the J or the 6P and they'll get hit out of the combo. They'll still get hit by the combo anyway. 
So a lot of times that will happen. You'll see the black beat combo right there. When you see that, that means it's not a true combo. They could have teched out of it. But because a lot of people don't like react to them getting hit by that first hit, they'll still get tagged on it. So it is useful to do. It is generally a good streak anyway to do, even on the ground. Uh, let's say like even if they block the 6P, right? You blocked it, it's okay, because now you get the pressure off of it, too. So there's a lot of versatility in that, where like, you can get knocked down sometimes. You can, if they're blocking 6P already, you can use it as a means to make a block sheet where you don't have one already to get a ball out. So it is very useful to do. And on counter hit, it's a free combo. Be warned, though, because... Uh, let's see if I can do this. Um, because it's not techable, or because it's not true combo on non-counter hit, Because that's not a true combo. They can tech forward in between those hits. Let's see if I can get it. So you can tech forward in his hit between those hits, and if they're really ready for it, they can punish you. I'm trying to do it with dummy is a little difficult at times, so I'm not gonna try to attempt too many times, but that's more like a higher level thing that you gotta work watch out for when you get better. So that's why you I say this now as it means like don't crutch on it because it's very easy to crutch on 6v6 stage because a lot of people don't take out of it. So try your best to confirm it when you can. So those are the Gatlings you want to do. That's a basic air combo. The basic Gatlings into air combo you want to do. 6v6 stage. There's also big reward on counter it for this move in general. Uh, let's just do this. You get the you get a full ass corner carry combo and it's a thirty percent and Oki from mid screen. And you have a lot of time to confirm this dude. Because it's jump cancelable, uh, you can ID after only on counter hit. This does not work on normal hit. Because that'll just tech out. So yeah, on counter hit you see that that whole untech time is all the time you have to counter it. So that was too late. That was a pretty late confirm. But I still managed to get the combo, and like it was well within a reaction, uh, like a person's reaction uh, period. So you don't have to be like sick, nasty. Oh, I know they're gonna do it right away and confirm it. You could do it, wait a moment, and then confirm. It's a very strong option to do once you get the hang of it, and nets you a good amount of damage, good amount of corner carry into Oki. You know, most of the time you're mid-screen when you're playing neutral of someone, so you're either, they're either going to be in the corner or almost in the corner by the time you do that with the full extended combo. So that's something that is very mixed, mixed up even better than it normally is. It's very strong. A lot of time to confirm off that too. And if you, for the counter, if you don't have the confidence to, you just go 6H, and it's a true combo. Let's see how long delay. delay. See how long this delay is? Oops, that's too much of a delay. Like you very well see it, got counter it, and then confirm it to either one of the 6H or the ID once you get the better, once you get better at it. So really, 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 really strong anti-air through and through. Um, another good aspect of this button is it recovers really fast for the type of button it is. It's very, with all the things I just mentioned about it, it being disjointed, super fast, and extremely good anti-air. You recover really fast, so it's also like a good thing to mash on in when you're getting pressured. Because it is seven frames, it's a very, it's pretty fast for something. It's very fast for something that goes this far. And if and if you get hit, you get create that space, you get a ball out, and now it's your turn. And you can do what you want. Honestly, the, the recovery on it is what really puts it over the top, in my opinion. Just some so two like slight issues. Not these aren't like the biggest deals, but something to keep note of is that a lot of six P will whiff on most crouching characters. There will be certain uh, characters that work on crouching, like uh, the big bodies, Potemkin, Coom, Bedman. They, it will always hit crouching on them. Kai randomly will hit crouching on them. Uh, I think Johnny, a few others. So you have to really see who it doesn't does work on. There's also instances where like. If they're already getting hit, already blocking, then the 6P will hit, but sometimes it won't. Like I found this earlier, just doing like practice on stuff like that won't work, but that does work. I couldn't tell you why one works over the other, but there are some inconsistencies with that on crouching characters. So in general, unless they're big bodies or you've gone through the 
effort of going to see who it works on and who it doesn't, assume that you're, this is going to whiff up close on crouching characters. The other thing about uh, 6P that's a little unfortunate is that it does move him forward a bit. And so that means sometimes in situations where you're trying to anti-air and like you'll be in the right spacing technically, but then he steps a step forward and um, the anti-air just, they get behind you actually and they'll, they'll just put completely and will put you in a state where you can be punished. So let me see. Let's just super jump. It's so like this thing, that'll work, but just step closer. And it'll whiff like that. Not the, he uh, again, these aren't like the biggest deals. They're pretty small issues, but something you need to keep in mind. Because this is also happening in the corner. Oops. That's weird. It's like that will happen in the corner a lot. And I'll leave you open the game punished. Because like a lot of times you're not expecting that to happen. Even though you will know it can happen, it still catches you off guard and it puts you at a natural disadvantage. So really, that's the only real drawbacks of this button. It will some it will on most crouching characters, and they can sometimes go, they can sometimes get behind you by doing it. But real small issues. This is a very strong button. One one of if not the best six P in the game. Uh, one of his best buttons for sure, if not his best button. All right, next up is our K normals. All our kick normals. We're gonna start with five K. It's a pretty good button. Oh, actually, before we get into that, uh, you know what? I'll get into that later. It's okay. So, back on this. 5k. This is a mending button again. It is also some frames that is also jump cancelable. It's good for hitting balls faster on the ground. So, you see 5p hits it like that. 2p will hit it like a slightly faster than 5p. But then 5k will launch it across the screen a little bit, a lot faster. So let's say you're over here and you want to get those things over there and follow up with it, you use 5k instead of 5p, for example. Uh, so it's good for that. Just general, the hitbox on it is pretty good as well. It's just, the, the hitbox on it goes like deceptively low. Um, let's see if I can estimate it. So about where like Venom's like shin is or the D button is down there. Not shin, but yeah, like, like this ankle area. It's about how down the hitbox goes and it's from his foot extended out all the way to down, down to that height. So it goes deceptively downwards. <coughs> Excuse me. And it can catch like low profiling moves like something like Grand Viper. That will catch it. And it will be a clean in a lot of instances. So it's good for throwing out there. The hitbox on it again is very good in general. And it's just a solid utility button. You're not going to get like a ton of like convertibility off it because like unless you're doing up this close then it doesn't really matter whether you're pressing 5k or 2k or whatever. But like in these farther out ranges, you'll have a greater potential to like hit them out of stuff, um, stuff things that wouldn't normally get stuffed, that kind of thing. Good utility button all around. Next up is 2K, crouching kick. This is his fastest poke at five frames. It is a low. It's really great for mashing out and pressure strings, so like bari purposes, because it is a quick low poke. Again, you're not gonna get a ton of damage off of it. Especially like when you're this far out, you can get like maybe 2k 2d, depending on the character. If you're like really far out, it will hit, but like the 2d won't hit. You can do something like that. It really, you're not gonna get a lot of return off of it, but you get the poke out, you stop their momentum with it, and you give yourself a little bit like like breathing room, which is really the main thing you want to do as Venom in when you're getting pressure. Just give yourself some room to work with, and 5k is really good at that. It's also really good to just like star your pressure with as like you're running up. Let's just block everything. So as you're running up, you want to do stuff. It's really good just to get in there because sometimes you'll run up and close slash will, will do that. Uh, it will get the far slash instead. So even just like as a means to like get this consistent as a start of pressure, it's really good for that as well. And it'll hit balls on the floor where like 2P can't. Uh, let's see, that should, so 2P hit that? Yeah, 2P won't hit that. So 2P won't hit that, 5P won't hit that. 5K will also hit that, but also 2K will hit that. There will be some balls where 5K won't be able to hit. But like 5K will hit that, for example, to give like an idea of how that 
buns hitbox is. Actually, that's actually a pretty good idea. So that ball is pretty low to the ground, but 5k still hit it because the hitbox extends that low, just to get back to 5k a little bit. I'm glad I did this, because I didn't think about this example. So 5k hits pretty low to the ground, not giving an example of it. 2k will hit that ball as well, and hit balls that get even lower to the ground, where 5k, 2p, 5p won't do it. Oops, let's not do that. So that's 2k. Um, JK, this is your jump kick. It is not jump cancelable, so if you do it in the air, you're kind of like committed to it. It's really its main purpose is to hit balls on the ground and as like combo filler. So you're really mainly going to are you blocking it? You're really mainly going to be only using it, not only using it, but your main purpose with it is going to be to like get knocked down, hit your K ball, and then run your Oki, your really basic Oki with Venom. That's going to be like the most general use you have of JK, along with, let's make him standing, so it's easier. Along with like combo filler like that, where you just do it in between hits. Again, this is not jump cancelable. You see me trying to jump over, you cancel the jump, is not working. Uh, so pretty much that's the, your primary, that's going to be your primary use of JK. There'll be other things as you learn more mix-ups and pressure strings that you can like it is special cancelable. All of his normals are special cancelable. So you can use that as like a delay into a match struggle or stuff like that. I'm not going to bring no, those things too much. It's going to be like a basic. Because again, it's supposed to be a basic overview. But yeah, that's basically the deal with JK. It has a lot of active frames. So if you want to hit early, and it'll still hit balls like that. So it's pretty generous on where how you're able to hit it. Let me see. See, I hit that button like way up there and then it will still act up long enough to hit the ball down. So it does have a lot of active frames for a jump normal, and it's probably one of those most active buttons. So there are some uses in there. Alright, next up are the slash normals. So up now, up, up now. Up next we got close slash. Put blocking on again. Uh what can stand for? So we got close slash. This is his proximity normals. This is only close this is slash one. Close slash and far slash are the only proximity normals that characters have. Everything else is either normal or command normal. So you really want to do it so close, even just like uh let's see, like this far, you're not gonna get the button. It is a three hitting normal, so one, two, three. All three of those hits are jump cancelable. I'm not gonna show them all. And the first hit of this is five frames. So if they're really close to you and you're trying to mash out pressure like you would with 2k, which is also fire frames, while this is good as like a all-purpose use out of pressure, if they're like in your grill doing something and they're trying to reset you, right? So let's do that. Oh, that never got. Let me try one time. Oops. And you can kind of use that as a mash out because the first hit is five frames. So it's really good at doing that. When they are when the opponent is standing, all three hits will always connect. While when they are crouching, most of the time the third hit will whiff like that. So this third hit on most crouching characters will whiff. Uh, the only exceptions of that are like the big body characters, again like Potemkin, Bedman, and Coom. There's also Leo, it will hit them only the third hit will only work on hit, it won't work on block, and a ram, it can only hit her, the third hit will hit her on block after she's already blocked something. That's a bit more nuanced, so don't worry about it, but I just want to throw that in there. Really, the, the characters you're going to do focusing now the most on are Potemkin, Benman, and Coom, as though they'll hit them crouching all three hits on hit and on block. Um, this is his main tool to be using in pressure. You'll see do people do this a lot. Oops. As it means a starting pressure, you'll start the, with the button, you'll get like into the button. It's very good at building guard bar. Let me turn off FD. There we go. So as you see, that was just two hits of close slash and 30, like what, 25% of that build? Let's see with all three. With all three, even a bit more, like 35% of guard bar. So he's very, very strong at building guard bar with his moves in general. And close slash is one of the biggest 
uh, factors in that because it builds so much so quickly. And again, this it's one is used for his basic combos. Basically, all his basic combos evolve close slash to some degree, except for a certain like throw combos. I'll get into the combos more later, but like, like that'll be a combo. Oops. Actually, this one is the one I was gonna do. Like that'll be a combo that works on everybody if they're crouching. You do stuff like that into more stuff I'll get into later. But really, close slash is one of the buttons you're going to be using like a lot in his combos. So it's really important in that regard. And again, I, I mentioned this before, but it's your, your go your, one of your go-to moves when you're close. Oops, I was supposed to put that. When you're close, you want to use button into gathering into 2H, into 2D, gathering into it from 2K, into all that. It is an essential component to his pressure and his combo game. It's also very good to throw a with, so throws in this game are forward plus H or forward and back H. But the, with the way the game works, you can use the weaker buttons as a throw S with them, and it'll prioritize the weaker buttons. So you can see I'm hitting H and S at the same time, but the weaker button is getting prioritized. If I do K, it'll be the same thing. P, the same thing. And you can only throw S with forward, uh, forward throws, because back throws you get FD. So you can't do it that way. But you do that, you get a throw, and you would want to do that close slash because they jump. Let's see. Oops. I'm a bad time. It's bad time, but oh my god, I'm so bad. Well, you get the picture. I'll just do it easier right away. So you can catch jump outs like that. As they're trying to do something, or if they're like maybe they're mashing something, they put themselves at a distance, like a little too far out. You will get catch them with a hit on the close slash because again, there's a five frame button. It will catch a lot of mashing in that situation, so it's really good to do in general as your throw s and just do like that. Remember, only for forward throws. Back throws, you have to do it back in and H. Apologize, apologies for the sloppiness. All right, next up, Far Slash. It's a good long quote, which goes really far across the screen. It's really good at like controlling space and just kind of like pestering them from far away and cancel on the, on the ball set. And that's kind of been like the main use of Far Slash. It's very good for this purpose, to like Far Slash ball, to another ball, to doing much stuff to get your, to get balls out and to either start your zoning, maybe start your pressure if the situation permits it. Really, you want to just like use that as a positioning mean to like kind of get them away from you a bit, and then start like whatever you want to do. That's like the main use for far slash. It's, it's good for what it is. You're gonna be using it a lot. Obviously, the normal that goes that far has its use. It goes with the balls even faster. Let's say you want to do this and you want to hit it really fast. It'll go faster than let's say 5k. That's general rule of thumb. All the heavy buttons will hit faster. You won't be using far slash that much for it? Maybe with like 5p or something? Or if like the ball's like farther away? Let's say that you put the ball over there and you want to hit it real quick, you can do that. Jeremy though, you're going to be using as a poke. Poke into a ball zone. Next up is 2s. This is one of them's best buttons. This is a 6 frame startup button, which is very, very fast something this length. And it's like a, it's a long range button. This is a mid, this is not a low. This is a very, very, very strong button for a bari purposes to mash out of like pressure. So in similar ways you do 5k when you're up close, there are obviously there's this range where 5k won't work. But 6, uh, 2s will work pretty well. And it's only one frame slower than 5k, which is very fast for again for a button like does this. As you're matching up with 2s, you can you can cancel the cargas, carving in the stinger and the ball set. And you'll be using that in general as well, because you'll be approaching and you'll hit the ball, hit them with two S and continue your pressure in different ways. It's also very, very, very good at round start. So this is like a round start distance. And this will hit 
this will hit char the other characters around star distance faster than whatever they can hit you with. So it's one. It's probably the best round start. You no, know, it's not. Probably, it is the best round start option in the game, and a lot of characters have to like learn to deal with it. There's not a lot of thing. Not characters who can like naturally do what they want to do anyway and be at an advantage versus two at, at round start. So even just besides you getting the advantage at round start, what that means is, is during the round start time, you you can hold back down charge, down back charge, um, hit two S, get a carcass out immediately. Hold down back charge, hit 2S, get a stinger out immediately, or not doing that and get a boss out immediately. All three of those things are very advantageous to you as, as a Venom player. Now, most characters can like specifically call it out. Like some characters, a lot of characters can 2P it. Some characters may be able to like uh, high profile it, or like uh, have their projectiles that work. Like Johnny, for example, he could do coin and I'll trade, but it'll trade in his favor. Um, then some characters can't do anything about it. Like Zotho, for example, he just has to hold 2S or back up. He can't. He doesn't have any counterplay to it at round start. So it's something that most of the characters in this cast have to deal with in some manner. There's not a lot of natural counterplay to it at round start. Very good at round start. Very good in uh, a bar situations where you're mashing under pressure and just general good poke as well. Good, good, good from Kerms too. I can say you're farther out and you get hit. That didn't combo, but it's good for that situation too. You get it. So like that combo and you do into run into whatever, right? One of the best buttons that Venom has, you're gonna be using it a lot. Let's see, next up, JS. As I mentioned before, this is a center frame button tied with JP as the as fastest air button. You will not really use JS in like air air situations as you will with JP. It will mainly just be like for hitting balls at like that angular rally, which is more, which is a different way than how JK hits it. JK hits like more downwards, while JS will hit it more like uh, sh a slight bit more straighter. It goes more horizontally, which is useful for okay situations to switch it up. Um, it is jump cancelable, of course, and this is gonna be like your main main jump cancel in your air combo. So if they say you get that, you jump cancel into whatever, right? And that's where your main jump cancel in those air combos. It is also special cancelable, uh, as all as normals are. But yeah, it's probably a function. Using it for combo filler. Um, using it in his BNBs like that. as like the first hit. And to hit balls at like the more... a different angle than you would for JH. So those were all of his S normals. Now let's get to his H normals, start with 5H. This button is mainly used as combo filler. Primarily for crouching firms because... Um, oops, let me mix up here. Because the three hits of Cold Shash won't hit and you can't get like... Jump combos off of that. But you can do like that and I'll combo into... Pretty basic ground combos. Or like you do the BNB like that, and you have to use 5H for that. And it doesn't work. 5H of these things, you don't get standing combos off it. That will combo, but like into QV, it won't. It doesn't gatling into anything. 5H is like the end of the gatling chain. So once you hit this button, you have no other normal options. So you have to go into specials. You can go into other moves, but. Those long ground knockdown the wits you're gonna be doing them at. So mainly you're gonna be using this as combo filler for crouching affirms. Um Which is very good for it. I didn't combo, but because it makes it very consistent to get those combos. Farther out ranges, like those combos won't work as well, but it's not like an issue of five H, it's an issue of like the combos not working now. Uh also it's balls pretty fast. So it like launches them across the screen. Pretty damn quick. So you can use that in certain situations as well. You probably want to use that over like far slash if you're trying to up off quickly. Because you're gonna be you're gonna be like this uh second half of the screen range anyway if you're gonna be doing that a lot of times. So that'll be the quickly launch across the screen. But yeah, mainly uh combo filler. It does also I'm sorry to mention, it does also stagger on counter hit. Standing stagger. Which you can follow up with. I have the match on quick as possible, but People don't match that quickly. 
I see a level 3 works. Maybe level 2. Oh, trust me. People don't mash out that quickly, and often you can get a combo over there if you recognize it. Because a lot of people don't recognize the... They don't know that stagger is to begin with on counter hit. And they don't, like, recognize it quick enough to be able to, like, mash out a stagger. So a lot of times you'll be able to get a pretty free uh, run of confirm off that. So it's 5H. Next up is 2H. So this one is a two-hitting move. The first hit is a low. So this first hit right here is a low. Um, and then it goes up into a mid. The second is a mid. And it's usually... The main purpose of it is to be using it in pressure streams. After like a 2k or a close slash, you will... You do that. Stuff like that. And to get the carcass rate pressure, stinger pressure. And to like all kinds of pressure you can do without that. And it's really good as... I means to continue your pressure because it is a very consistent button. This was not always how this button looked like. It got changed in Rev 2. So some of you uh, older Venom players from like Plus R or something might, reckon, might not be familiar with it. It got changed because the old button would hit basically two higher hits and it would often whiff on crouching opponents. So with this change to it being a low, does add, make it much more consistent in your block strings. It's very good for that. And that's for your primary use for it. You can also like use it to hit the balls upwards a bit. Uh, no. Oh, that's no, too. I didn't realize that. We learned together. And it covers a very very specific distance that a lot of people... Once you get the hang of like Venom's flow, you'll see a lot of people like, like will initially jump on the ground trying to get in the air. And it hits a distance in a way, in an angle where people will get really uncomfortable with. So if you, if you see them jumping a lot in that like upper corner area away from you, you can use that as a means to like catch them there as well. Like Similar to like Carcass. The angle that carcass covers, you can do it that way. That's more of a niche use for it, but it's still a use for it that uh, is pretty good once you get like, the flow of Venom's zoning game down. But yeah, mainly using used as like a as a pressure tool. Next is 6H. This is also on top of talking about earlier from like the 6P 6 6H handling. I work a block. I guess not. Let's get you standing. So on top of it, working like this, as a gathering from 6H. It's also mainly used as a combo extender. So you use it in that sense to continue combos on this stuff. Or to like end combos like that. As it reaches pretty far. I fucked up the combo, but using those senses in your combos to either end combos or to extend them. The extension is usually off 6H QV, you're going to do it, Q5, you're going to do it on um, corner only. And it'll, if it gets hit, it'll knock down. Let's see how high I can fix it. It will knock down. That's pretty high up there, and it'll knock down. So it will generally cause knockdown when you hit with it. It's also just in general by itself, like uh, just a good poke. As it goes kind of far, it goes pretty far, not kind of far. So you can use it as like, I mean, to catch them in doing something. You just want to get them to block real quick and you do that. It's not a good anti-air because this is very slow and the angle on it is not very good for hitting anti-airs. But when you're trying to do it at this distance as like a means to control space, it does catch jumps, like on the initial jump up. So you can't really anti-air with the same way you would do like a 6P. But you can like catch them trying to jump or do something like that, and it'll work reasonably well for that. You're not, you're probably not gonna do it like on purpose like that very much, but it can be used in that sense. And then next up, JH is this button. It's a really, as you can see, the angle by on its own. It's a really good air to ground button. Uh, people tend to have trouble anti-airing this because it does hit pretty deep. Uh, let's see. The active frames, the hitbox is at the tip right there, but then also once the active frames are over, that's it, the hurtbox extends all the way down there. So it's a give and take with this button. It is very, very good air to ground, but it can also, if poorly timed on your part, or um, if there's like particularly ready for it, they can anti-air it reliably. Because there is a hitbox around like where his knee is like uh, bent up there. 
So it's a give and take button. It's really good for air to ground purposes. It hits pretty deep, which a lot of characters will have trouble with if you're like hitting it from like this, from, like even like just this much. You can see how deep it hits. Even just like normal jump highness, it will hit pretty deep. So really good air to ground button. It can knock down from like jump height. It won't knock down from like these heights. Uh, is he blocking? So let's take it off the block. Oops. So, so like jump heights, it'll mostly knock down. You can see him in this one. That was a bad combo, but even that high, that, that high. So like around this height, which is kind of like beyond normal jump height, is they like won't knock down anymore. Like around this general height, where like where you're where you're at, Let me get a little better. Like around this much, it will always knock down 100. But if you go like uh, like, like here and higher, it won't knock down. It'll, they'll be able to attack at the end. So it's conditional knockdown. If you're generally a jump high, you should try to get the JH knockdown. If you're higher than that, um, you just do an air combo and they'll get them the reset, the air reset, which is fine for you because it pushes them away and makes you set up a little bit. Um, one more thing about it. What was I gonna say? Oh yeah, it also hits balls at like a really sharp angle and fast. So like you're not gonna be hitting balls like that that much often. But if you want, if you have a ball at certain spots, and you want to get it down quickly, because maybe they're like right underneath you or something, and you have a ball there, you can hit J, J H, and I'll sharply hit him down. It also cause the ball to like ground bounce off the ground, and go up. Well, all balls do that, but it's not like as applicable as J H would be, because of the angle it hits at. All right, next up is the dust normals. We have 5D, pretty standard 5D, not a whole lot to it. There's just one additional small thing that makes it a little special, but more interesting than the character than the 5D itself. Again, this this has a, as a dust button, as a standing dust is like pretty standard. You get your combos off the corner, it's fine. But if you happen to have a ball behind you when you do it and they block it, it will hit the ball behind you and it will essentially make that 5D safe. Because it'll, it'll ball hit the behind you. Now, I'm not going to front. You're not going to be really playing and do this that often. But, you know, if you find yourself in a situation where it happens, it's nice to know. And then the uh, farther out range is, it's like, hard to get, as you just saw. Otherwise, pretty standard 5D. Not much to talk about. Um, 2D, on the other hand, is very good button. This is, I believe this was 6 frames. I didn't write it down. Yeah, 6 frames. So as fast as your 2 edge, 2S, which is we might know for being a really strong Abari button. This is also a very good Abari button. But much less range and um, 2 hitting. The second the second part of the sweep will hit farther around than the first hit will. Uh, you'll typically get 2 hit knockdowns um, on most of the cast. I think like Chip or like Milia, for example, if, you, if the button, if you're hit like too far out, they, the second hit might not hit. Or if you're too out in general, you might get like a single hit like that, or the first hit will hit, but like the second hit will do G. So there's some funkiness to it when you're at farther out ranges. But generally up close, you'll always hit, get hit like that. You can also cancel the first hit and again knock down like that if you want, which is what you have to do in some instances because the second hit will OTG. So like that instance, I did a long combo on purpose. The second hit will OTG, and you won't get really good OTG. So like higher hitting combos on the ground, you have to you have to one hit cancel. But for like basic combos, you're good on doing the two hits. There is a gap between the two hits, as you can see, one, two. There's a gap in between there. When as you get better with Venom, you'll learn the like. There's some counter play with that as if the eye be the first hit they can punish and so on don't worry about it right now just keep in mind that there is a gap there um easily it's easily gallowing into like everything gallowing into this button so if you ever need a quick knockdown over something you can get it 
Except for 5-H, five, five because that doesn't gambling into anything. But 2-H does, close slash does, etc. Far slash. Very easy to get ground in knockdowns if you want gambling in too deep. Um, let's see. It can be used as low profile as well. Because again, you are like break dancing on the floor, you're going very low. It, using it for low profile, the main application of it will be for dead angles. Certain characters like, uh, let's see, who else I'm like, uh, like Batman, for example. Let's just go Batman. Anyway. It's like you can dead low profile like good like half the characters dead angles. You know, I truly can't set it up like this, so whatever, it's fine. But anyway, you can you can low profile some a lot of the characters' dead angles, like have the cast as low profileable dead angles, and you can use the bait like Kai's. You can do it, Batman's. You can do it, Axel. I want to say Jacko. You can do it, Johnny. You can do it, um, Potemkin. You can do it. Just off the top of my head, like those are some characters. Faust. You can do it. I believe Eno as well. So a lot of characters you can dead angle, low profile or dead angle, and dead angle is like the guard cancel mechanic in this game. Alpha counter, V reversal, guard cancel, whatever you want to call it. Dead angle is the name of it in this game. So it's very good at that. Pretty good uh, 2D overall, pretty good sweep. And then the other D button is this JD, this big old button over here. It's a big air button that covers a lot of space in the air. So like I say, they're like a way above you like that. You want to tag them? You can. As you saw just right there, it does hit like behind them a little bit. Let me see if I do that. Now. Let me see if I can do that on purpose now. Oops. Let me get one more go. Like that's a pretty good one. So as you can see, I mean you can't see too well, but it's game. It hit does hit behind them a little bit, and it covers like. Let me just do like that. The whole swing will hit, so like covers a bit of an angle behind them. It's very good for catching people in the air. As far as like an air-to-air -air purpose for this one, you're generally gonna be wanting to use it when they are like up this uh, double jump, super jump height, because it's very good to fish with. So you get like that, and you, you cancel the mash struggle, and it's you get counter hit. It guarantees a knockdown. Sorry, I'm babbling a little bit. I'll try to clean it up. Let's see, force counter hit. So just like that, knockdown, almost knockdown. You get free, free combo. It will basically knock down from like whenever you're going to do it. And if you're doing that much anyway, you should always be canceling it into match struggle. Because you even saw there, like pretty high up. It didn't, all, it didn't quite knock down, but it was just about to knock down. Will that one knock down? Yeah, that one will knock down. So even it's still pretty high up there, it will knock down. You cancel the match struggle. You can get a full combo, that was a bit low for that, but you get the idea. It's very good for doing that when you're trying to catch them doing something from way above you. Um, it pops characters up when they're hit. Uh, it pops characters up when they're getting hit. So you see like this, it'll pop them up like that. And it's vital for his uh, corner combos, BMV combo. So this is the game call pops up and you hit him with 6H and it will get the combo. Normally it will just knock down there, but because the JD pops them up, you get that added combo potential. And you can extend combos from there through various means. Let's see. Um, so good to fish with, good to fish with, um, good for, essential for combos really. And also hits the balls in up and down pattern. Actually, do this one. So you'll see it hit the ball, it will up, down, up. Which covers a lot of ground and like a lot of space in front of you for them to interact with, which is very, very good. It's very practical use of JH or JD rather. And yeah, so it's main purpose for JD, big button to get to fish with when they're higher up, when you want to get air to air. Uh, used in combos, either as an ender for like general air combos or as a means to extend combos in your BNBs, you're gonna be using a lot for that purpose. And really good angle to hit with tip balls with. So pretty good normal. Alright, and that is all of our normals. Let's get on to throws. I'm gonna do both ground throw and air throw. There's a few notes on that applies to both these throws. 
both the throws, both ground have like oops, have like a lot of untech time. You see, you have a long time to combo off of these things. There's just a ground throw. And this is the air throw, which is actually longer than, has more untech time than the ground throw. So you have a ton of time to combo off of them. But the trade off being that once, you can only combo them once they're in the ball. The moment they're able to exit, oops, the moment they're able to exit the ball, they're no longer combable. They're in, they can tech out. If they don't take on time, they, you can get like a black B combo, but you're not going to get like a true throw combo off of it. Um, generally, that's not going to be a problem because, again, you have like a whole lot of time to get a combo off that. The other thing is, both of these do... How many hits do they do? Seven hits. Same for air throw. Oops. Same for the air throw. Yeah, both do seven hits as the throw itself. And that's as a means to like reduce your okay yeah reduce your risk gauge if you get thrown so you see that it'll reduce the risk gauge by like 60 percent and so that way you don't get like an insane da amount of damage off of his throws because again venom is really really strong at building risk gauge building the guard bar so it's not uncommon for them to have like flashing guard bars like that and you getting a throw so that's really as means to like just get rid of a lot of that even at like let's say 50 percent guard right you'll still get rid of like a good chunk of it so that's just something to keep in mind with that, and it's, that's why it does those first seven hits. Um, and yeah, so now let's go specifically to the ground throw. It has a ton of versatility on how you can combo off of it. You can opt for like really good corner carry. And let's just make sure, let me emphasize the corner carry here. So that's a full extended combo. You saw me go corner to corner on it. Even just mid-screen. Doing the easier half, not full extension, you get from mid-screen to corner, no problem. So super strong for, for corner carry. It is also very good for like strong basic Oki. So you do like something like this. Let me do actually this. Messed up a little bit, but you saw just like what I got off of that just from a throw. And that that one in particular, unless they burst right there, it's burst safe. Unless they burst that very, very first hit, it'll be burst safe on those ones. So you got a lot of opportunity for doing a lot of different things off of Momentum's th ground throw. Um, again, full corner carry if you want it. Really strong Goku if you want it. Depending on your distance from the corner, you can get both. So whatever like that and just very very strong altogether like his integrating venom's throw into your general pressure mix game is very good and it'll open up them getting hit to like the pressure and mix ups more as well because they're they know how strong venom's throw is and they don't want to get hit by it and a basic uh, like a, a real basic ground throw combo you want to do because doing this one while it's very good is like a bit involved for just learning out Venom, because you have to do dashing 2H into charging with charging your carcass into an instant air dash. It's a lot of little components you have to learn. None of them are like overly hard, but just you have to get used to it. So a basic ground combo that'll work like really well. Micro dash close slash cancel on the QV. You hold the QV just enough for them to get hit, and then you start your okay. You can do that to any of the QVs you want. Let's say you want to do KQ view and then just do like wait for them to do okay, do, uh, okay like that. You can do that, no problem. That will also be universal, work across the cast. Because even just doing like this, that hit will be less reliable coming back sometimes and also just whiff on certain characters. So just a little dash in front, do it, and then you can do whatever okay you want like in that situation. Of course, you will want to learn this combo for obvious reasons, the corner carry and all that. And then on top of that, you will want to do the extended version. You won't always get the extension on these Venom combos. Just because like certain, sometimes spacing is off, sometimes they're like uh, close to their ground, two in the air, whatever the issue may be. So you sometimes only want to do the normal combo, but the extensions will be pretty applicable. So 
that's ground throat. Let's get on to air throw. Not that. So this is air throw. It has more untech time than the ground throw technically, but you also have to like get back to the ground before you can do anything off it. So that kind of compensates for it. Like it won't hit until you get to the ground. So that kind of makes being able to combo off it a bit situational. Basically, if you get an air throw from like within jump height, as long as close slash can hit, it will combo. Let me see if I can. Like that's pretty high. See that. I'm trying to get one more go so I can get a better example. That's not good. That's not good. I missed. Well, you get the idea. You can do it as long as close slash is able to hit, it will combo. But let's say you get the air throw like way up here. It won't reach. Then you won't be able to combo off it. Unless you spend meter to combo off it. So if you if you want to come off that, you like that into whatever. You're generally not going to want to do that just because it's not worth the meter to do that most of the times if you're not going to kill or be close to killing. So for the most part, past like jump high, you're not going to get a combo off your air throw. But jump high and lower, so long as close slash is able to connect, you will be able to get a combo off it. Um, you can do like normal ground throw stuff if they're close enough. So you can get combos like that. You can't get 2H, but you can do close slash. The Varath mentioned for for ground throws. You can also do close slash into IID, but that's a little more character specific because like the added hits adds like more gravity and so on and so forth. So generally going 2H, but on air throws, oops, you can 100% do that as a BNB. You can also just do that into the same kind of things you would do normally if they're low enough. Like for these higher up ones, this will also usually work. But as I mentioned with the ground throws, some characters are too skinny and that hit from without the dash won't allow it to connect. So what will always work from like these higher heights is you do cancel the H-ball forward, run forward a little bit, 6P6H. So air throw, call slash, cancel the H-ball. Cancel on each ball, from Echo Dash, 6P, 6H. And that will always work if you can get the combo to hit in the beginning. That's a reliable air combo. So I'm going to do one clean one. And you get basic OP off it. And at this range, you can do like running jump JS. And that'll get you, that'll get you immediately too. So that's the that's the gist of his air his ground air throws very very strong. Ground throw is very strong and a lot, lot a lot of versatility off of it. Air throw also very good. Uh, as you throw them from higher distances, you get less ability to do stuff off of it, but it's still very good, and it's one be would be very important for you to get good at it. You see a lot of them have very good throw games. Especially with the air throws because of how the return it gets. Even though this is really, really good, 6P, a lot of times you can get an air throw. Like instead of getting like a 6P like in this situation, where it may have been one knockdown, you get an air throw instead. And you get a full combo. So getting better at air throws is a 100% skill you want to learn in general in Guilty Road, but especially with Venom. Um, Alright, so that's his throws. Let's go over his dead angles real quick. Again, dead angles in this game, or this game is guard cancels, you know, your alpha counters, via reversals. Uh, if you're coming from Strive, the wire season Strive. You do by holding in block stun. Let me just do it. So let's just do that. You hold down back and then forward plus two buttons. Any buttons except for dust, I believe. Because if you press dust, you just get burst. Because any button plus dust is a burst. So really, any two button combination on block, and you get that angle. So holding down back forward and two buttons that are not dust. It is a pretty standard dead angle attack. It will 
no, it's not you can't low profile it, so at least it'll, it'll be guaranteed to work. Uh, Venom, one of the biggest one of Venom's like biggest drawbacks is he has no reversal of any kind. <sighs> Excuse me, with the exception of his burst super, but we'll get into that later. And that's not very reliable to use at all. So you have to kind of rely on like being able to poke out stuff. That's why his pokes are so good uh, for pressure. And his back dash is so good because he has to rely on those to get out of pressure. And his dead angle is like his main like get out uh, get out of jail card. You don't really get like particularly good like Oki from it. You can get like a meaty stinger or oh, I messed up. or like a ball out. You can at least get a ball out a lot of times. But like it won't necessarily be a meaty ball. You just have one out. So the Oki you get off is not like the greatest, but you get to get out of pressure and that's mainly what you want for it. Pretty standard dead angle uh, all things considered. Alrighty, now we're going to the special moves of Venom. And it's time for the balls. So first is some... I'll, I'll give general notes on how the balls operate first. And then I'll go to each specific ball there, its use, and where you gonna generally want to go on, gonna use it. Sorry, let me get some water. Alright, so first, this is like the reason you're playing this character. Is to use these balls for me. One immediate note is that you're probably never gonna have like four balls out at the same time. So don't go into this thinking that you're gonna be doing this very often. Really, to be honest, even three balls in neutral situations you're not gonna have out. A lot of times it can be single use balls or like two two balls. Into doing various things. Various things, excuse me. So generally in neutral, you're going to be focusing on one or two balls at a time. Three and four, three balls will be mainly seen in like setups. Four balls you're basically never going to mess with, so don't even worry about it. You will need to learn every formation though. Just to get the formations on the screen one time, this is the P-ball formation. So this is H, S, K, P. These are all also on dust loop by the way, so you don't have to like look at here and memorize it. They're all handling on the Venom dust loop page. Uh, let's do the K formation. You'll know which formation you're getting based on the last ball you did. So if I always want to get the P formation, I do the P ball last. So let's say I just, I just want from this, the P ball formation, this first ball and like this middle ball right here, that would be the S ball and then the P ball. So I'll just do S and P and I'll get those two balls in particular. So that, that's the general gist of the formations that It'll always, the balls will always go to the formation of the last ball you made. So let me just do another example with K ball, right? So let's say I want these first two balls here, this this one and this one. Since it's the K ball, it's the, the first hit was a P ball, the other one was a K ball. You do P, K, and I only get those two balls. You cannot get other balls from a form, the formations without using that ball first. To make that make more sense, I'll do this. So let's say I only want the, like these two bottom ones, right? Let's say I only want those. I can't get just those two because that's only the S and the, the P and the S ball. And because it's in a K formation, you can't just get those two balls. It has to be, you have to have K ball in there first. Sounds confusing. If you're doing it on your own right now and you try it out, it'll make sense. The balls will always go to the formation of the last ball created. Um, you can cancel ball sets into ball sets. By doing the motion. See, right now I'm doing the motion by doing it. They made it so that in this game, over the over the course of the extra's lifespan, they made it so you just hold the next button to get the the next ball you want. So you do the initial ball summon and then you hold the next button. So if you look at my inputs, I'm just holding the buttons, and the next ball is coming out. It's v it's very very useful, even just like beyond like wanted to get these two balls out with like zero issue because sometimes you know you'll get those balls out doing manually but sometimes you'll miss it up or like you do a slower by accident for whatever reason doing it this way with just holding the next button guarantees you get the next ball out and even more importantly than that you uh, you can charge while you're getting the next ball out so like whereas like, if I want to charge between this like, I'll do the button motions then hold back but then that way, when I hold it, I instantly get my charge because I'm already charging during the motions. So it's very, very useful to use. Um, 
you will be doing that a lot. And yeah, just get used to it because it's very, very good. Um, you'll be doing that for like Oki, okay, neutral, pressure, all kinds of things. You can also summon in the air. So all the summons are air okay. It gives the same exact formations on the ground, so you don't have to learn like a brand new set of formations. The only thing is the air recovery is a lot more than the ground recovery. So you see the ground recovery, I'm just doing the same ball over and over again. This is the... You see it takes a lot longer in the air. Um, so that's something you'll be worried about when you're in the air doing these sets, is that you do hover there for a long time. And sometimes, because you're in there for longer, you, you're more, you open yourself more to getting punished. A general note for Spendal Specials, general moves is that basically everything he does leads him in countering state during the recovery. So even this, you're in countering state during this, you're in countering state during this, you're in countering state during this, and so on. Which really makes you want to be more careful about where you do certain things. Because you could just die by setting in the wrong place. So even though this is like a strong neutral tool on its own, it kind of gets like bounced out a bit. A good bit by being like so susceptible to counter hits and getting big damage off uh, you messing up. So just keep that in mind. If you're ever wondering why you're like trying to set up or like you're doing this and you just get hit and die. Um, so that's the general gist of how the balls work. Now let's get to the specific balls themselves. I'm going to go over each individual ball. And then I'm going to give you three formations that are like your staple formations. You're always going to be using these three formations no matter what. On top of whatever other formations you happen to find for your own that you like. So first and foremost is going to the P ball. It's just basic ball that puts the ball right in front of you. This is going to be your the main ball you use just in general really. Because it's utility is good. You can hit it low. You can higher. You can get lower. You can in the middle. Um... Even off like basic pressure, you can do like that into like whatever pressure you want to do. If you want to back up with it, you can do that. And even hit it like that, different angles. If you want to hit it up like that, you can do that. So it's really good to cover the ground space. Because you know, I'm sure you've seen clips of, like people just doing this and like some characters having trouble dealing with it because it covers the space where like they're on they want to try to use more often. Some characters are like, more like ground based than others. And doing the boss like that is actually really good in those instances because they just have to like kind of like deal with it. Um, grounded P-Ball like that, Air P-Ball as well. It will be used for like OK as well. Like I, saw, I showed the other example. Uh, what was it? Like you do that into P-Ball, into JD. That was a little too high and then knocked down, but you, you saw it earlier. That will be a basic use for that. Generally a good ball to cover, to get out and cover space with. K-Ball, it'll put the ball out like a bit in front of you. And this is going to be your primary like mix-up ball. So you put the K-Ball out, one and jump, uh, jump kick into your Oki. And that's going to be like your basic, basic stuff with K-Ball. You can just do like a bread and butter, you do cancel the JK, or J, uh, cancel the K-Ball. Run the JS and you get your OK that way too. That's gonna be your primary use for um, K ball. You can also just use it as a means to control the vertical space and the air as well. It's also very good for that. That is a bit more involved than just doing like the P ball one because the P ball you just hit it and go. K, uh, K ball has to jump and hit it as well. So it's a, bit, a slightly bit more of a commitment. You're not gonna really want to do it like around these heights because you open yourself up to be like hit more. But far down ranges, you want to do that to like better control space. You can totally do that with uh, K-Ball. Mainly though you're going to be using for like, as, a, as an individual ball, mainly for mix-ups. S-Ball, oops, S-Ball it puts the ball behind you. It's very, very good for like when you want to set a ball to create space with. So a lot of a common use for common application for S-Ball is like you hit far slash, oops, far slash into the S-Ball and you back up with it. So it gives you a means to go backwards, create some space, and keep yourself covered at the same time. And it does that very, very well. That's that's your main use for that single ball. Say, so say like, oh, I messed up. I want to go backwards and start again. It's very good at covering space. And you can even mix up with uh, JP, 
to like cover the uh, jump space you want. JS to cover the lower space quickly. JK not as much because it's just like a more awkward hit. You're gonna generally want to use JS in this situation. But yeah, primary use for that single for the single S ball is to back up with to create to safely back up with and create space, which is very very good for it. Vam did not have that option in previous games, and this game is very very good use for it. H oops, H ball puts the ball a bit out in front of Venom. Your primary use for this is like Oak situations. Um. So let's do this. You do H ball into a ring jump. I messed, it's, he's, I messed up a little bit because the spacing was a little off, but you'll do it in that way to sort of act like it's like a safe jump. So when you do that, if they it is blitzable, so be careful of that as is uh, the K ball Loki. But if you do it in that way, it you do it correctly, it will act as like safe jump to DPS, certain supers as well. So it's very good for that. It's just, just a general good mix-up tool because you can do it. You can do it this way. Ah, let, me get, let me try again one time. My mind's melting, but you can use it as like a, to hit the, the person and the ball and go into the delayed overhead. You can do delayed low. You can do low air dash. You can omit hitting the ball entirely and just do a low air dash mix-up. So when you go like that, and then low air dash to that. Actually, I'll show like this. So what I was talking about before, like that, into the delay, or just like, into low. So it has a lot of o o applications on Oki. It's also just like, if you want to have a ball to like, teleport away to. So let's say you do like that, and you back up, and you're like, oh, I'm going to try and get into it. And they back up, back up. You can teleport into it. That's something I forgot to mention, actually, earlier. Is that the you can teleport to the balls? I think I was gonna bring this up in the teleporting section. Let me check my notes super quick. Sorry about that. Yes, uh, so I was gonna mention that later on as well. But just because I brought it up here, you will teleport to whatever ball is on the screen, and whatever ball you created last. So let's say I create this ball goal here, and then the H ball is that first ball. I'll teleport to that one. So Venom will always teleport to the last ball on screen. If there's no balls on screen, he just goes straight forward. If there is a ball on screen, he will go to that ball. And it's always the last ball created. So the last ball created here was the H ball, so I'll go to the H ball. And I'll bring that up again later in the teleporting section. So it's it's good for that use. So I have a ball over there. And then, you know, oh, they're pressuring me. I'm backing up, backing up, teleport. And now I'm over here now. So it's good for that. In general, the H ball is probably your least used single ball. You're probably use other balls more. You know, just for your mix-ups, K, K ball for your mix-ups, P ball, P ball for your like, general stuff, S ball for your retreating, and then K H ball. Certain okay situations and like tap something to like teleport to when they're like when you want to get away from them. All individual balls have good use though. They're all practical and they're all in the way they're useful. So now I'm going to go on to, uh, I'm going to show just three two ball formations. These are like your staple formations. You're going to be always using these no matter what. They are very good for what they do. The first one is SP. And this will be like your basic uh, pressure sequence off of the knockdown. So SP and you hit the balls in the middle. If you hit the balls just up front like this, it'll hit them staggeredly. It'll hit the, the lower ball first and it'll go off that way. So you want to hit it like around this distance, so I hit them both in like an even manner, and they go in the same distance. And that way, you get very basic pressure um, off of like basically any knockdown. So like even if you have like a farther knockdown, and you want to get a quick pressure, uh, that's not good. Let me do this. You want to do that. You'll get those walls faster that way, and you can get in do your pressure. You want him slowly off like a normal, uh, like an easier knockdown. You can do that. There is a gap between the first and second hit of it, so you can just compensate by doing a normal in between, and in that normal you can cancel to another ball. So the the formation itself like just naturally lends to like continuing pressure, and it's very good for doing so. 
It's very straightforward what you're going to use it for, but it's very effective in in its application. That is again S ball, then P ball. You hit it in the middle, and you follow up with your pressure off of your basic knockdowns. There is a gap in between, so you compensate the pressing button, and you can use that. You don't have to necessarily cancel because I've been showing you canceling off it. You can just do that and then keep going on. So it's very good for. It's very straightforward, but very good. So that was SP. Next up is um, P, then K. This is like a good all-purpose zoning um, formation. You're not gonna generally want to do it up close. Oops, wrong. You're not gonna generally want to do it from like this distance because like you're not gonna get what you want the function of it for. And off of knockdown, you can do like that to use it as like a K ball. Um, as a K-Ball Oki, but you're generally going to want to do, uh, do other things, or even just like use K-Ball itself, and then like you get more advantage off of it. So really, you're going to want to use when you're like half screen to like full screen away. You summon it, you can hit it, and you can control a lot of space with this. <laughs> Excuse me. You can hit the first ball up that way, hit the ball coming down, you can back up and do this. You can hit the ball at the same time, cover that like really standing to jump height and make a deal with it. It's very good to just zone with in general. And really makes it some with characters have like a hard time getting around with it. Like that. And you do more. So it's really good as like a starting to your as a starting formation to your pressure. Aim just by itself is very strong because of all the angles you can cover with it. And even if you want to just go like this into that and you can do that. Hit it to make sure like the ball's going upwards. Very good for just general zoning. So that was again P followed by K. And the last of these like stable formations I'm gonna show you is S S H. So you do slash then heavy slash. The thing about this one is you don't want it to set like this. The goal is not to have it come over here. You want to early hit it with 5P. So do S H hit it there. And then you can see it hits both balls in opposite directions, one going up, one going low. And it'll, it's a very quick way to get like a bunch of balls on the screen, cover a lot of distance easily. Whereas like with PK, you can't really like do that as easily because you have to like do additional hits to get the kind of angle you want. Whereas with SH, you hit it early and you have, you have those angles covered. The downward ball goes really slowly, covering that whole horizontal area on the floor, making them have to like interact with it. And then the upper ball again goes very slowly up. If they're already like trying to go in the air from that distance, they're gonna have to like adjust or run into it. So it's very strong just as a general use um, formation. And then once you hit with that one, you can do like another one in the middle, and all of a sudden you have coverage. Uh, mixing up a little bit. Into like P ball into that, and then just like that, you've had coverage on like all portions of the screen through the formation. So again, you want to early hit this. You don't want it to set because it's just uh, not as effective in that range. And if you're going to do that, you might as well just be doing SP anyway. And so SH early 5P ball hit, and you get that real slow, nice coverage off of those uh, ball hits. And it's really, really good for that. So that's the that's the gist of the ball sets. Next up, I'm gonna go up to Q5. It is spelled QV, but the V is supposed to be a five. I don't ask me why. That's just how it is. You'll see people say QV or Q5. I'm just gonna commit to saying Q5 just for the sake of it, because that's the correct way of doing it. Um, this one is this move. Have you seen it? It summons the ball as a hit. So whereas normal ball summon does not, it just summons a ball, nothing actually happens. Q5 summons the ball as a hit. Uh, the ball, it's you, so you can hold QV, Q5, there I go, and you'll level with the balls. And it can, so you have the basic ball, you hold it for just a little bit, it'll hit level to this ball, which is a two hitting ball. A little more after that, you saw it got slightly larger, that's a three hitting ball. And if you hold it all the way through, you get this big ball and that's six hits. Uh, the the leveled up balls obviously do more chip damage and more meter drain on block. So 
if you have the opportunity to use them, it's generally good. Like I showed you an example earlier with the throw combo. Did this into a QV, Q5. And you can follow up pressure like that and setting up all the different kinds of things. The ball itself does not go active until you release it. So, it would, if I just hold it indefinitely, it will automatically release once you get the max level. But until I release it, it does not go active. Um, the different levels of the ball hits do have different frame data. I'm not going to get into the, the exact frame data right now. Those are all on dust if you want to go see them. But generally, the instant one and like the slight level one, those are minus. This one is... If they're ready for it, you it's not your turn anymore. It's their turn. You're s generally safe on block. You're not going to get punished usually because it's like minus four or something. But it's no longer your turn if they're ready for it because they can mash after before you can do anything. That being said, though, because of the variance of you being able to like release it, it does add a bit to like a m sort of mind game when you do it because it's not a static timing, so you can vary up timing like a ton. Obviously, you can go from here to here to here, then do it. Let me put in the blocking, sorry. So, you, you vary up timing a bunch. You'll see that, like, used a lot. See, so even just like this. From a quick release to a slightly different release. It changes the timing up, and it makes them have to, like, be really on their toes to react to it properly. And the reason that's important, other than just like getting a hit and changing up the timing, is because on counter hit, it, the wall bounces. So on counter hit, I'm blocking. On counter hit, they wall bounce like that. And if you're really ready for it, you can convert. I don't remember the combo, to be honest, but. Uh, what was the combo? It's a long set, let me see. You can come off it. I don't remember exactly from off it, cause I haven't. I'm. I've never been. I never practiced it up to confirm off it. But you absolutely can learn to confirm that. It's not too bad to learn. Even just the baby one, you can do that, no problem. And you get at least you get something off of it, which is pretty nice. There are more like normal confirms you can get until that that gets you like the air, the jump combos and all that. But I don't have them on deck, so I'm not gonna be showing them off. So that does add to it. Again, this is pretty punishable. Let me turn that off. Not punishable, but this is like no, no longer your turn. But on the flip side, the big one, that's like plus four. So if you get this one out, it's your turn still. And you can go into all that. You just saw all the like life that did. Look at the life bar. It does like 5% on its own. If I turn on Fallout's defense... Over like 30% of the meter just got drained from that one alone. So having those getting those big ones out will be practical through various means. You will it's not just like oh they're just there, but you're not gonna use them a lot. You will be using them. The big balls maybe not necessarily from a QV summon, but they will be used. Um, another thing, oh yeah, is that this will absorb projectiles. Uh, do this. Sorry. QV does absorb projectiles, and it, as long as that, as long as you're holding the QV, it will keep absorbing projectiles too. And that goes for most projectiles in the game. It will. A big an example I'd like to give out is that it will absorb Axel's Rensen, no problem. It will absorb uh, like Stun Edge, Gun Flame. As you saw Venom, Venom Balls, um, Eno's Notes. A lot of things it will absorb, even like some supers, like Coombs Ball Super, it will absorb that as well. Leo's projectiles, it's very, very good for absorbing um, other people's projectiles. But that being said, it doesn't absorb everything. So there are certain special projectiles in this game that function differently. This just because they have different properties. Like so, Chip, for example, has Gamma Blade, right? And QV will not. Like QV will not go go through absorb gamma blade because it's a special projectile. It just goes through everything. Same thing with um, Eno's 
horizontal chemical love, the big uh, horizontal move she does. Potemkin, when he flicks a projectile, that you can't absorb that. Uh, the powered up stun ninja, the sealed stun ninja from Kai, when with the seal out and shoots it through it, you can't do it. You can't um, absorb those. So certain projectiles like that, the special ones, you can't do. But all the regular projectiles, you can absolutely, um, you can absolutely absorb. It's very, very strong for those purposes too. Um, what's next? It can cause knockdowns off of uh, confirms. Let me get him just standing so I can do a basic one. Like you'll see this a lot in combos and corners. It can cause knockdown. Um, not if they're like too high up. Uh, let's see, how can I create this? That work? Uh, that worked too, but when they're if you try to do Q and knockdowns from a bit higher up, it won't really work. Just wanna show if I can. Might not be able to show up, but well, it, it from most practical ranges you're gonna use this for, it's gonna knock down, especially in BMBs, like you just saw in the corner after a six HQB, that will always knock down if it reaches. But if you do it from too high up, it won't. The range that it won't knock down from, you're only ever going to run into that problem where you did the BNB incorrectly, maybe you did the SSH too high, you did this QB too early, something like that, then you won't get knocked down. But otherwise, you, when you want it to knock down, it will give you what you need. So like even off, oops, I can be doing that. So even off this like bow knockdown, for example. Most practical situations you're going to use it for in those situations, in, in situations where you want it to knock down, it will do it. And just one more note before we get to the specific QVs of the, each of the different buttons. Um, you can't cancel a QV like by holding another QV like you could with um, ball sets. You can't even cancel like the recovery of QV in general. So that's something you have to think in mind if you want to do multiple. You have to hold it, do the next one, hold it, do the next one, and so on. That's not really going to be a common thing you do outside of like specifically the Venom here. But it's just something to keep in mind that you can't cancel the recovery of the QBs and the other QBs like you could with the ball sets. It doesn't even work on ball sets. You have to do it manually. Um, next up, we'll get to specific QBs for each one. So PQV is this one. It puts the ball right in front of you. This is going to be the one you're most commonly going to be using in like general pressure and in the neutral. <coughs> Excuse me. Because it creates the ball right in front of you. And it gets you the immediate access to it. Whereas with P ball, when you just normally summon, you have to wait, you have to summon it, and that whole travel time goes a long way to waiting for it to come out. Whereas QB is right there. Certain characters can be able to like if you don't hit the ball quick enough, they can run under it, like Melia, for example, she'll be able to like run on this no problem. But if you put the QB out and do it, she can't run under that. So that's why you would want to do QV and neutral over like a P set. Although generally, most of the time you're going to want to do P set anyway. So, let me put into blocking. So you're in, a lot of times with PQV, you're going to want to use in uh, pressure. And just kind of like as a means to get the ball out right in front of you, get them blocking. Again, like I mentioned earlier, that was a bit too far out there. Oh, that follows, no wonder. I'm wondering why I was going to push back. There we go. Because you can vary the timing, it can act as a frame trap by itself. Guess them to guess what they're gonna, what you're going to do next. Because you know, sometimes you may do this a lot. You may be like doing carks a lot, and then, like you suddenly do QV, it throws them off a little bit. You, it's good to rotate your options like that as Venom between your carcass rates, in your QVs, maybe you cancel the ball sets into Stinger, and QV helps with that. That's going to be your, your primary use to, for QQV. And you can absorb the projectiles with any character. Oh, sorry. You can absorb the projectiles with any care with any QV. So this is like SQV, for example, right? It works all the same, but you're, you're probably going to want to use PQV just in general. Oops. Just because it's, like it's more immediately useful to have a ball, a level of ball in front of you than, like, let's say, in this range or something. Maybe you want to do like an HQV to have like a more 
a little ball maybe farther on the screen to do that, but as far as absorbing projectiles, you're generally going to want to be using the PQ view. Just for the convenience of having the ball out. Um, KQ view is up next. It creates the ball in the K spot. K ball spot. KQV is mainly used for combos. It's it's very good for crouching combos. Uh, as it gets the ball right in front of them to where they at, where they're at up there, and then from there you do you can do a five K six P. The ball will hit the six P. Does or six P with the ball rather, and because that interaction is there, the ball hit causes additional hit stun, and it allows you to combo six H. Because if you remember. 6H, 6P, 6H is not a natural combo, but if there's a ball there, it can combo. That's a very basic uh, crouching confirm. Uh, I still do a lot. Many Venom players from top to bottom do it a lot. It's very useful. Ugh, get some water. It's just very useful in general as like a good, consistent ability to get combos off of crouching. Because again, Claw Slash does not hit on the third hit for most crouching characters. So you have, if you want to get like a better combo, you have to go into 5H and do a QV. You also do it off of just a uh, close slash. Because that works as well. But generally off crouching, if you want to get a QV combo, you have to do... You can do QV for... H, uh, KQV for like a easier confirm. Next is SQV. And increase the ball there. You're not going to be using this for the ball creation in that spot. You're not even going to be really using it for like the on hit purposes. Oops, like on hit purposes like this and wait for it to do whatever. SQV is, uh, you're going to be using it to hit during the travel time. And what that means is during that part, you hit the SQV after it hits the opponent as it's traveling upwards to its spot. You hit it with a 5P, and through that, you do an instant air dash combo. So, just to see how it looks like. Into an instant air dash combo. And that is very, very vital to learn as Venom for all of his BNB purposes. Because that's how you get the crouching combos with the air dash. Into all that. If you want to be in the corner. Uh, Venom's too skinny for that to work on, but it will work with other characters. Let's see what standing with should work. Maybe not, but for most characters, this will work. You saw it worked right there. I had to delay a little bit. I forgot how to do that. But to get those extensions, you have to learn 5P. SQV, 5P, IID, on hit. Just When you're just learning Venom, you can get away with not doing that for a good long time. But to get all the BNBs down, to get all the confirms you really want to get down for the corner carry, the setups and all that, it's a must learn. Especially on crouching. Being able to do this over this is very good. So you saw I was already in the corner when I did that confirm. Now sometimes you're too far for that to work. So like let's say like that's not gonna work from this range. But K will. Maybe not Venom because he's too skinny, but from farther out ranges the SQV is not gonna work to get those combos. So you have to do the KQV KQV route. So those are both important to learn, but the SQV uh five P ball hit ID portion of those combos is like a mandatory thing to learn as you get better at Venom. You will have to learn that. Um, HQV. Mainly used for setup, like I showed in that throw combo. Oops. Like I showed in that throw combo earlier. You do something like that. Oops. I'll be honest. Being bad. You do that into a... I messed up the combo a little bit, but you... That's going to be your main use for HQV is for OP situations, usually after throw combos. Usually four throw combos. Um, in like, let's say this example. You end with HQV into a ball set and now you got OP you can do where you will teleport to that ball after you hit this ball. So you hit that ball, you'll teleport there. That's just an example. That's very good OP on its own. 
Um, but it's an example of how you use HQV. You're either going to be using it for like by itself and throw combos, or throw combos you want to get Oki off of, or as like an ender off of 6 HQV. You might do HQV or whatever the QV to get into a particular setup you want. All right, that covers QV. Next up, we got Stinger Aim. So this is one of Venom's two special moves. Uh, two special moves that have charge properties. So this is his horizontal charge, back and forward plus S, back and forward plus H. It's a sonic boom. And it's his primary like horizontal moving projectile. Very good at covering the space. Or covering for like getting quick ball out to continue pressure with. Um, it's very it's useful in like general OK situations. Let's say you're not like really comfortable like doing this stuff yet. You can really just do this into charge stinger and get like simple OK that way. Because stinger, both versions are chargeable the same way QV was. And it is useful to time, just like get like a can timing on Oki situations. So basic combo into like S Stinger, you do that. S Stinger being the slower moving one, and H Stinger being the faster moving one. So in like Oki situations or like pressure situations, you want, you want to do like S Stinger, just to get that slower ball. And like you want to catch him doing something, or like you got like an RC confirm, you'll do H Stinger to get the ball across the screen faster. Or even if like you want to catch him doing something real quick from across the screen like that, you can do that with H as well. Um, so that's the general for both of them. Now I'm gonna get to the S version of Stinger. Um, so I'm gonna do S Stinger, H Stinger, Stinger RC, and now I'm going to the spins. In the order, I'm gonna do this in for a Stinger. S Stinger, like I said, the slower move projectile takes longer to get across the screen. It is a lot safer on block then. Let's see, let's do like that. Oh, too close. I got on block is a lot safer than like H Stinger will be. If I'm stopping bad. You see like H Stinger has long recovery, but S Stinger recover a lot faster. Which like this range you're not gonna be doing Stinger's lot anyway, but it makes makes a big difference from like something like this where you can like act faster. Or I suppose H Stinger where like you're more stuck in animation and you're more committing to it. As I mentioned earlier, it's good to meaty with. If you're like unsure about what Oki to do, you can always do that and like run a pressure. Um, yeah, just general, generally good for being safer, maybe staggering pressure a little bit more than you would with H Stinger, and good to meaty with in general. You'll see all Venoms do that a lot. H Stinger is this really fast projectile. It goes cross screen stream very quickly. It's very good for like 2S RC confirms into doing whatever combo. It's very, very strong for that. And Stinger YRC is where H Stinger gets like really, really, really strong. So now it's going to the Stinger YRC portion, which is Stinger YRC is probably one of the best strong. It is one of the strongest YRC options in the game. You, a lot of people say it probably is the strongest option, RC option in the game, which I wouldn't really deny. It's very, very, very good. And it's, like, it's a good all-purpose tool, Stinger YRC. Like you say, you want to do a neutral, like you're kind of like in this sort of range, trying to catch you do something. Do that, maybe catch them hitting a button, trying to move. Let's say they blocked. Let's see you're over here, and they blocked. Okay, that's cool. You get pressure anyway. Let's say they jump. Uh, let's say they jump. You can react very easily into an air throw or anti-air. Uh, let me get my bearings down. And then projectile washes in general are good for that use. Venoms is like particularly good for how fast it is. And like the amount of space it covers. And of course, his immensely strong throw game, all the reward he gets off of throw, his very strong pressure game if they block the YRC. If they get hit by the YRC, he can convert into really strong OK. So just really, everything that grants Venom is 
they're all very good options, and it's why you see Venom's just like spam it as soon as you get 25 meters, they spam it trying to get a reward off it because any way it connects or doesn't connect, it's favorable for you in at least some way. That being said, do not, do not, do not get into the habit of getting 25 meter. Like, oh, sick, I got 25 meter. Uh, I don't know, do this thing or RC. Don't get in the habit of doing that. Uh, how do I turn that off? I don't remember. Oh, it just defaults that, right? Oops. I got 25 meter, like, oh, I don't know what to do. Uh, Stinger RC. I said, Stinger RC. So now, okay, you have this, you used a really strong YRC option, but now you have no meter. That's a very, very, very common pitfall Venom Miller has fallen to because what Stinger YRC is such a good option that as soon as they get 25 meter, they burn it. And as Venom, you do not want to be a meter star because you can do a lot with your meter as Venom. You need to save it for, obviously, Stinger YRC, you save it for supers, RC confirms, dead angle. You need your meter as Venom. Even though it's a very good option, do not get into the pitfall of burning it as soon as you get it. Um, that being said, let's say that I hit. Let's say you get a hit on him, hit on the opponent. Even just doing this, bam, you got full charge ball into like whatever Oki. Not an Oki, it's just they have a giant fully charged ball on them. And because they're blocking six hits like that, you can do like a certain mix. You can do mix ups off of it. You can just run up pressure. You can catch up to them if you need to. Obviously, it's good for just confirms. And so I messed up into like your your bread and butters. It's very Stinger YRC, Stinger RC, super strong option in this game. Uh, you will be using it a lot. Just remember, do not fall into the pitfall of burning the meter as soon as you get it. You, you do need that meter as well. Now we're going to get to the spin. So an Exert Venom has a specific mechanic with the with the balls and how the Stingers and Carcass rates interact with in them. Because this is the Stinger section, I'm going to go into the Stingers right now. We'll get into Carcass next. The balls, when they collide with the Stinger Carcass, they create a new charged up ball. And the ball will either go forward or backwards, depending on what your input. If you want the ball to go forward, you do not do anything. You don't want to put anything, the spins will default to going forward. However, if you want to force the ball to go backwards, you will do your input and then you hold back. You go down, you see my little uh, joystick on the bottom left? You go down back, which is one, down, which is two, or down forward, which is three, for stinger aim. Any one of these directions will get you the backspin for a stinger. So let's say I do three, I hold three, and it just gets me the black. You don't really need to worry about hitting neutral down or down forward. It, just always do one because this will overlap with uh, carcass raid because the uh, carcass raid spins are different. But you don't really have to concern yourself with that. It's not really worth troubling yourself to learn it because you don't need to. Always just default to doing down back. If you want to spin, down back. Can't have about doing that because I'll, again, I'll get into more with carcass raid, but hold down back the carcass as well, it'll get you the backspin of carcass as well. So always just get in the habit of holding down back when you want to get the backspin. Um, so yeah, that's the general gist of how the spins themselves work. Um, I think I go into like the applications of it later on for like Oki and stuff, but just an additional for Stinger Aim for the spins. Because Stinger Aim is chargeable, that charge carries on to the ball. And it will always upgrade the ball to like the next level ball. So let's, so this is a level zero ball. With level zero ball, it goes to a level one ball. Level zero ball with a level one ball goes to level two ball. Level zero ball with level two ball goes to the max level ball. So it will, all, if you're charging Stinger, it will always upgrade the ball to the next level of the ball. Which is very important with this, with Stingers, because you can do like, hold it. do stuff like that as you get more comfortable with it and you're just continuously creating charged up balls that you can, you can do stuff with, which is very strong. And um, yeah, so that's the overall gist of Stinger. Let's move on to Carcass Raid. Oh man, really getting into it. 
Not a ton left. I think after Carcass Raid, it'll probably be a lot more. Won't be as nuanced after Carcass Raid, so it'll be hopefully not too much longer. But anyway, Carcass Raid. This is your other charge move. It's your down charge, your flash kick. It's two versions. S version goes more angular, S H version goes more up and down. Um, this primarily, they're both mainly used as your pressure tools. Uh, whereas S Carcass, as you saw earlier, also has applications for combos. The, these cannot be charged like Stinger. So if you see I'm holding the button, I don't get anything off of it. Whereas with Stinger, if you hold it, it charges. Carcass Ray does not, is not chargeable. As you see the active on the bottom left, it's not chargeable. Which is fine. Uh, previous games, it, you were able to charge both. In this game, is only Stinger you can charge. So let's get into S Carcass. This is your go-to move in pressure. It's a very, very strong pressure tool in general. At point blank rages, this is plus 10. So you're massively plus on block just from here. Even more so when you go like farther out a little bit. Because this is still something they can't, they don't have an answer to. If you do something like this, which is a little bit tighter, you're more farther out, but even more plus as it takes longer to get the ball to get there. And you recover so, so quickly on it. Your advantage will get more as you get farther out, but the issue with that is as you get farther out, they're able to jump more. Actually, let me do this this way. Uh, not that. Let me see. Let's, let's do that for example. Oh, come on. One more time. All right, last attempt before I give up. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, y'all. My brain is fried right now. There we go. Jesus, that should not have been that hard. Anyway, so all that to show that as you get farther out, you can jump it. And while if that carcass connects, you'll be massively plus. The more farther out you do it at, the more uh, jump outable it gets. So like, let's say you're around like this range is when you need to start, start worrying about them being able to like get out. So it's, it's like that. It's like the border of like not being able to jump out. Which if they're not ready for it or not, they're not ready for it or don't think you're gonna do something else, it's very good because you get, again, a mass amount of advantage. And you'd be like, you're very plus at that point. But they can jump out. So that's something you have to be careful of. As far as like how you're gonna go into Carcass Raid, like any string to like let's say 2k close slash, close slash 2h, uh, 2k 2s 2d, 2h 2d, uh, close slash and 2d. You can do this off of any string so long as you get the charge in. Just make sure you're charging as soon as you start, whatever you're going to do. And you can do it off of anything. Uh, any like ga ground gatling, you can do it off of. Which makes it very good for that. As you've saw, seen a lot already, it is used for like BNBs. Especially off of bros. Which is where you're going to mostly see it off of BNBs. And it's obviously very good for that. Because it grants you the ability to corner carry. Or it's like. If you try to do something like that, it's a lot more finicky. Or like. Oops. Or. You have to do like certain combos like that, where it doesn't even work. Or if like settle for these combos that are like more finicky to work. So 2H Carcass will grant you these combos off the throw. Mandatory learning for Venom um, down the line. Uh, so that's the gist of H Carcass. Very, very, very strong pressure. Your go-to pressure tool makes Converting off of throws really scary as well because you get the full corner car carries as well. H carcass is this more vertical one goes up and down. Looks really strong at first, but there's like certain nuance to it that makes it not quite as good as S carcass. Starting wise, plus, when you're point blank, this is minus nine, so it's very minus. But you're never going to be using it at this range because it's so minus. That's not the point of the move. The point of the move is to space yourself. To when you're far enough where it'll bounce up and down. 
That's the point of this move. Why do you want to do that? Just switch it up. You don't want to be doing this all the time. Because it becomes predictable for a while. Even though it's very strong, if you're, that's all you're ever going to do, you can learn to adjust it really quickly. That's why you do this to switch it up a little bit. Because as I mentioned earlier, the S carcass, once you're out further, they can start jumping out. So if you do the H carcass, it'll catch them. It'll either catch them trying to jump forward out, or if they're trying to neutral jump, they at least won't be able to move anywhere. They'll have to come back straight down. Which makes it very good for those purposes. And it's why you want to switch it up. And if you're feeling yourself, you can do multiple ones like that because you have so much time to charge because there is more like up and down time. You see, you're just stuck there. This is not this is not me being like a charge master or anything. This is after you like get like basic common see what charges you can be you're, you're gonna be able to do that. So like commonly you'll see like I'll do one maybe two and then oops try again. Like I say, you do one you do two and then you do the S one and continue on and you switch up your pressure in those manners, which is very important as venom when you're pressuring. Now that seems very good, but the drawback to it. Is that you can hit Venom out of it if he's on the on like the startup of it if when during the ball travel time. So when the ball is going up and down, Venom is able to get hit out of that, and when you hit him, he the ball goes away. So as you saw, the ball will go away. If you know he's gonna do it, it goes away, and now like turns basically over. We're not. Eh. It depends on how ready for it. Or if you're not like super ready for it, you're at least like in a back in neutral state. If you are really ready for it, it's your turn. And then you know, and so whatever, right? And that's uh, differently applicable for di or every character. But you can hit them out of it, and that's kind of like the main drawback of the move. Because otherwise, it would be honestly, it would be too cheap if it it wasn't like that. I believe this also applies to balls that are like created. Yeah, so just a quick and easy example. So I create this. I'm going to spin this later uh, after this portion. But because the ball goes away on hit, that also applies to like newly created balls. So I created this ball with the carcass, right? And now I got a hit on you. Oops. And the ball goes away. So that's that's true for newly created balls as well that have been hit with H carcass. It's not true with S carcass because S carcass does not go away on hit. That ball is still out because S carcass stays away, stays on a hit because it doesn't go back and forth. It goes one way. A lot of other projectiles like that go back and forth do that as well in this game. So like uh, Coombs projectile, the ball will do that. Eddie will go away on hit on block. Uh, Bedman's air, the air projectile air Bedman has where he throws his head, that goes away on hit and blocks. There's a lot of other things that are similar, and then when they go like they linger on screen in some way, they go away. Which just doesn't mean it's like balance that out. So otherwise those options would be really, really good. So in Venom's case, that's how his option is balanced out. It goes away on hit. I don't think it was away on block, actually. I'm not 100% sure, to be honest. I guess there's not really like a lot of application for it on block because you're either hitting him or you're not. So that even if it does go away on block, that part doesn't matter. You're either going to be hitting him or you're not. Um, so that's the individual carcasses. Now to go into the spins of each of them. How you input the spins is identical. So let's say you have a ball out. If you want the ball to go forward, you don't do anything. That was the S ball going forward, or the S carcass going forward. And this is the H carcass going forward. If you want it to go backwards, you can, again, hold down back, and it'll go uh, backwards. For carcasses, it's, it's any back direction, whereas the is any down direction for the spins. So you do down back, back, or up back, and you'll get the spin. So let's do up back for example. The ball spun backwards. But because down back is universal to both Stinger and Carcass, you're going to just want to do down back every time, just to like remove any sort of like executional error you can get yourself into, because there's no point in giving yourself that trouble. Um, the spins... They create balls obviously much more angrily, whereas like Stinger, you're only really ever gonna have like the back and forth balls. And that's just kinda like just as like they are. The carcasses, they always create the balls at more angles. So like even just like me doing these ones. 
and like some like just say I didn't move at all, right? I do get the ball in that direction, it goes there. But let me move like just a little bit more forward, and you see the top spin goes lower. Whereas, oh sorry, the top spin will go lower, whereas the back spin will go higher. So there's a lot more uh, room for like different for getting different spots. Those walls are different spots. With the H, with the S carcass and H carcass, so you can play around with those. There are there's setups that use those already. That you'll see people do that. Take advantage of that. You can find whatever you like doing. Something common is hitting them. Something common you'll see, for example, right, is this. That's like a common easy Oki route, and that's only possible because of the way the H carcass gets hit. And like the recovery of it, of course. You're generally going to want to use S carcass over H carcass for the spins and pressure just because H carcass recovers so much later and S carcass is like you're already recovered. So you can do like like that. Whereas H carcass creates the balls in like more different angles and takes long has a long recovery. But both are applicable. <sighs> Alright, that missed anything for this. I don't think I did. So we will move on to teleports. So as I mentioned much earlier and at various parts, this is Venom's teleport. He cannot jump out of teleport. You see me in play up, nothing happens. He can air dash. So you can air dash forward and air dash back. Um, as I mentioned before, he will always teleport. If there's a ball on screen, he will always teleport to it. And if there's multiple balls on screen, he'll always teleport to the last ball created. So that this upper ball, this closer ball to me was last ball created, so I'm going to teleport on that one. The lowest ball here is the last one I created, so I'll be teleporting there. And that's a hard rule. That rule also extends to like newly created balls through like uh, do it this way. So let's say I do that, right? Now that ball is a newly created ball, I'll go to that one. That's a hard rule. Wherever the newest ball on the screen is, you will teleport to it. Um when there's nothing on the screen, you just go straight up. So it's very good for Obviously, mobility purposes, as I mentioned earlier, let's say they're over there, you want to like teleport around and do something. Let's say you teleport something in the air and you want to just like escape, you can do that. Or as you can just like do that, it will grant you the opportunity to hit balls where they're like not, they're like way out of your range. Another added bonus is that when you cross up with the teleport, it will auto correct forward. So, or well not forward, it'll auto correct you facing to the opponent, I should say. So let's say that this way, I won't hit the ball the wrong way. I'll always hit them where they are. Which is very useful to be able to get like proper ball hits, it helps you confirms and so on. There is a specific, I'm only going to mention it because I know people are going to say, you were mentioned that I didn't mention it. There is a mechanic in this game called jump install where you cancel the starting frames, the, like the jump startup frames into something else and you'll retain a jump. Probably not the clearest way to explain it, but let me get some water. So, under normal circumstance, I can't jump off this, right? Even off of canceling normal, I can't jump off of it. But if I like jump cancel this normal, I can jump off of it. In this specific instance, I just I just TK the motion. Which I'm doing bad at right now, but you can when you jump install this, you can absolutely double jump off it. You can also do it in neutral, but I'm like really bad. I'm really bad at it, so I'm I'm not gonna show it. If you just do the motion really quickly in neutral, so it's like up forward and then like down down forward. But I'm super bad at it, so I'm not gonna show it. More so that I can't show it. But all that to say that if you do jump install, you can. If you jump install the teleport, you can double jump off of it. It's not like super applicable to do. It's not really something that should be on your like list to be learning all that much it's like once you're super well situated with the venom you got all this stuff down you're pretty comfortable you've gotten pretty good if at that point you want to learn it you can but even then like it's not really something that's like commonly used so if you want to learn it you can i don't really like i don't recommend learning it but it's like not it's not particularly it's not as good as it seems to learn it just because like the application of it is not like usually there so that was teleport. <clears throat> Let's go on to match struggle. This is an air only move. 
this is his overhead. All four heads of the overhead will all four heads of it are overhead. So he has this, this version, which is the S version, and this version, which is the H version. You can jump cancel this and do it off of that. You can TK it off of buttons, like Tiger Knee it, which basically means you do it like instantly off the ground. You can do that off of jump cancel of buttons or like 5k, close slash, you'll see a lot. Oops. Close slash you'll see it a lot. 2p if you're feeling frisky. 5p, oops, 5, 5p? Alright. 5p if you're feeling a 2. It's very common to see Vems do this. Very common to see Vems do that as a mix-up tool because it's very strong. It's quick. It's like 23 or something, 24 frames. I don't know exactly, data, but it's reactable. But it's still a quick overhead. And you don't have to do it off normal, so you can just do it raw once you get the hang of it. So you can make him block. And so overhead, just get a quick overhead in there. It's very, very good. You're going to be using that a lot. The S version is going to be the one you're primarily using. Because um, it's the one you can combo up though, after. You can combo off of it into like the combos. Uh, depending on distance, like say you're farther out, you can always at least get that. If you're closer up. You get your full combos. Do whatever. You get your combos that way. Very good as an instant overhead. Um, you can TK it. Doing down, down forward, forward, up. So like that's TK. To do a running TK, there's like two different ways to do it. I do so like I do like six six so forward forward and then do the motion. That's what I generally do. There's also like a, a particular way of doing where to be honest, I haven't done it in a while, so I've, there's a way to do it where you can get the it's a more like precise input to get like a micro dash uh, mass struggle. I don't remember off the top of my head. There we go. You basically do a circle. Well, no, I'm not going to say something wrong. So you can do that if you want to look it up. You can ask an event in Discord or something. I don't quite remember what the input is because I haven't done it in a long time. But that's an alternate way of doing it. And once you get it down, it's a bit more awkward of an input, but it's like a lot more consistent. But really, whatever, however you do it, however you get used to it, is fine. Um, so even this is good. Uh, are you blocking? Should we do this way? So let's just do this. So generally on this move, if you do it from like higher up, you can com you can punish it because the higher if you don't hit low enough, you were you're in some recovery and it's punishable. Even if it's like normal, you can get throw punish. You see like you can also IB the last hit. I'm not good at it because I'm kind of spin at the moment, but if you IB the last hit, it's basically a guaranteed uh, throw from like most ranges, even like the micro ones like that. You can get throw four punch off it. Uh, that's like that's like a higher level defensive tactic against it. So I wouldn't worry about it too much until like you start seeing a couple of against certain players, then you have to like really adjust for it and be more safer with your approach over with uh, match struggle. So that's S match struggle. H match struggle is this one. It got a click flip kick at the end. You're not going to use this one as much as H, just because, like, for overhead purposes, it does do that extra hits on the end, and you can't, like, you can't continue, like, pressure off it, you can't get, like, as good confirms off it, for example. You can get, like, extended combos off it if the full hits connect. But if they don't all connect, you're not going to get able to get a good confirm off it. So. As far as oh, use as an overhead, you're not generally going to want to use it that way. The main utility in it is that you do get this flip kick, which it has somehow like striking vulnerability on it. So what its use is is that it could when you're doing it from like higher up, for example, when you're trying to like get down real quick, trying to throw off, change your air momentum, instead of just doing this, which is what Wonder expecting you to do, 
if they're ready for that, they're going to be able to punish it or compensate for it better. Whereas if you do this one, they're going to get potentially hit by that second hit, by the flip kick, and not be ready for it. Which is really good. Because, again, it does have some amount of striking vol on it. It does... I don't think I'm able to recreate it, but it can hit behind. Let's see if he's standing. Uh, let's see if I can do it. If they press a button, that flip kick will hit. And it'll, tr it'll often trade or just win for you straight out. And it'll cause them to knock down, which is really a big win for you in that situation. Um, that's going to be the main purpose of H-Man Stroke. You're not going to do it a ton. You shouldn't do it a ton because, you know, whiffing, whiffing this, like you're just sitting there waiting to be like, at the very least, pressure started on you. It's good for what it's used for. Use it sparingly. But it can absolutely be useful. Okay, last special move. We're going to do Double Head Morbid, which is this move. There's two versions of it. This is the probably the least used special move you're going to be using. But both of the versions have applications to it, so it's not like a useless move or anything. This is the S Double Head Morbid. It's the slower version, of course. Um, they both do four hits. So that one does four hits, and then the H version does four hits. S version knocks down though, whereas the H version does not. H version will only knock down when you're at like really high hits, like in the upper 20s at least, and that's the only way it will knock down. Which will be like certain certain applications after like Dark Angel or something, you're not going to see that a ton. But it will only knock down high hits, whereas S Double Hammer will knock down lower hits. We're not really using it for that purpose. Uh, the main use of this of Double Head Morbid, S Double Head Morbid, is to hit the ball upwards. Oops. Hit the ball upwards. And. It will hit the ball directly above Venom, so like if they're jumping up above you. Like they're hanging out up here or something, right? And you have that ball out of here. Oops. It will catch them directly up and above you, where like it's difficult to get something up there. Which is one application for it. The more important application for it, however, is on like Oki, right? Uh... Where you can do something like that, which is really, really, really good. And I'll explain why. So, when you hit the ball with S double head morbid, uh, oops. it will travel up and down like this, especially with the full charge. They'll all travel up and down. But because this one is fully charged in this situation, it will do multiple hits on the way up, and as it goes down, it will also do the remaining of the hits. Because remember, the big ball is six hits. And you can do this with like, the level one or two balls too, depending on how it gets hit. So on top of it just being a very like good check to keep them situated in one place, it drains a ton of meter, does a lot of chip damage, and this ball does not follow the convention I said earlier with H Carcass Raid where the ball goes beyond hit. If you dead angle the situation and hit Venom, they will still continue to get a hit by the H ball. Which is really, it should not be that way. I think it's like a big oversight on their part, but hey, we're here now. Take advantage of it. It's really, really good. Same thing goes for like Burst, for example. Like you'll get bursted out for sure, but then like the ball will come down and hit you still. So I'm going to try to do this again. Actually, let me do this one. So we'll dead angle first. And you see it still hits me, even though I get dead angled anyway. And just for the sake of showing the burst as well. Oh, that was gold burst. That was, <laughs> that was pretty lucky, actually. That's me being lazy with my spacing and time because I'm showing off, but I'll do it more appropriately. You see, there the burst whiffed entirely, and I still got punished for it. So it's a really, really strong tool um, that you should actually use for the, that method. H double. Oops. I don't know why I did that troll. H double and morbid on it. And um, really, its primary function is just to get a knock, to get those last few hits on like. Um, 
an end around situation when your health bar is at like let's say I don't know like something like this right Uh, just keep blocking off. So I get free and lazy. So those, like those last few hits where like another combo may not be practical to do, or they could do off a sixth H into that on like an Aerith combo, for example. Its main use is to get those last few hits because it does do like four quick hits at the end. Uh, but otherwise, you're not gonna be using it a whole lot. You can use it for the same baller purposes as. Um, S double M orbit, but the spacing on it is like more a lot more finicky because you, you have to get pushed back into the ball hit, so it can do something like that, which on the surface level seems really good. But the problem with that is like when they, if they FD or IB or something to mess up the way your block string works, the way that they block the the move, it throws out of whack how that ball is going to hit, and it's not the spacing is not going to be proper. So generally, it's not like that good to do in that situation. Um, if you figure stuff out that like happens to be good while doing that, go for it. But generally, it's gonna be really finicky to get the space properly, and you're really only gonna be using it for like the last few hits of a of like a kill combo to get those last few hits. Whew. All right, those were all the special moves. Two and a half, two hours in. Let's see, let's try to get this done soon. All right. Next up are our supers. We'll be starting with Dark Angel. This is gonna be your main super that you're gonna use. It yeah, it gives super super strong Oki when you use it in conjunction with like uh, like a knockdown to ball set or particularly corner Oki. Mid screen Oki is like not like particularly great, but you still got a giant ball on them. So let's just say. I do that, right? Alright. What was... So, first of all. So they'll block all this. And now they got to deal with the Dark Angel being on, front of, in, on top of them. On top of whatever setup you choose to do with the Stinger. Or the ball setups you got. So let me just show off that S double and more thing I did was doing right now. We do that. And it'll continue draining their meter, draining their life. You can do This is where you get three ball setups if you want them. Someone something like that. They have to hold that so it gives you time to set up and you mean do the whatever particular motion you do for your setup. Um other What's happening? I don't know, but you can do off QB knockdowns to get like a really good spacing setup. So I'll do it one more time. So like this example, right? You do a particular setup. You got this something like this going. You hit with the ball, and now you got this really strong OK that even if it hits, you saw it did 50%. You get so much opportunity for mix up for chip damage off of Dark Angel that it's just stupidly strong to do. That's not even accounting for the amount of chip damage it does. So let me turn off health regen and let's do health regen first. Oh that's my oops. Turn off player one accent. It's not over yet. Oh there you go. I'm stupid. Alright. So, are they blocking? Yes. So even just as the move itself does a lot of chip damage. Like all those hits, it did like 10% chip damage just by itself. Not adding on top of anything that's already been done, like uh, additional balls, like max charge balls, whatever. Just the move by itself does about 10% chip. And where do I turn off meter? There we go. And let's turn on. Where is it? There we go. Follow the defense. And then, just by itself, the meter drain, as you see on the bottom right, almost 50%. So 
So it's very, very good at draining meter, very, very good at um, draining life on top of getting the mix up, on top of getting the additional chip damage, wherever your Oki preference is in that situation. So a lot of times they have to like, they have to spend all the meter just not to get chipped out. And then by the time you get to the actual mix up portion of it, they have to hold even more chip damage that you can do nothing about. And it drains all the meter really, really good quickly. It's very strong to do just in general. So all, so that's the normal version of Dark Angel. Super good, your go-to super out of knockdowns. Grants really, really intense Oki that they just have to hold. Uh, his burst, he has his burst super is also his burst Dark Angel. That's the only burst super he has. It will grant him. Oh, let me it will grant him full invo like most burst supers do on wake up for like the first 25 or so frames. So you can't use it in that sense. Even with that, I wouldn't recommend doing it too much because it's very reactable and like very easily compensatable for a lot of characters. They can just like air dash over it, easily react to it and jump over. Some guards get a low profile like Soul could like arm reaction Grand Viper under it. So while it's it's an option for you once you have it, I would recommend not using it all that much until you like you get comfortable with situations where you can use it. That being said, it does even more um, chip damage than the normal version. Oh, that's just it. Oops, my bad. It does even more chip damage than the normal version, just for consistently doing the corner. That's like maybe go 15, 12, 12, 15 percent chip damage, a little up. Um. And with FD added, remember before it did about 48%. Now it does about 55%, 60% chip damage. Again, that's not that's just the super by itself too. So burst version, more chip damage, more meter drain, gives it in bowl. Even still, for Oki situations, you're not really gonna want to use it until it's like their low life, and you want to get that extra bit of drain in. Extra chip damage for a meter drain in. Sometimes use it for wake up situations because it's not. It sounds good on paper, but it's not all that good in practice. So that's Dark Angel. Um, next up is Red Hill. Is this air super? Is this air only super? As you can see, it throws a bunch of balls in a bunch of directions. Um, you're mainly going to be using this combo as like uh, an end of round kill combo after JH, and you'll get the hits all that way and. Mainly for kills. You're not really using for all much else anyway. It is good for that situation, but even still, like if you don't get like a good spread, let me see if I can manufacture. Well, I'll just do. I'll show it this way. So, like, let's say like here, right? The balls go pretty straight, right? But as you see, they they angle from where you are. So, like, the farther you hit it from the more angular it's going to get and it, depending on how you do distance it from your air combo or whatever combo you do it into some balls will miss and they'll be able to like tech out of it so that's kind of an inherent problem with this super it's always had this problem in previous Guilty Gear games they did make it more consistent and throughout versions of Exert which is great they added more damage to it but it still has that problem you're really only going to use that when they're like about to die um, next up is Bishop Renau this super creates a special ball. This is not like the other balls where you can QV it. Uh, it's not a normal projectile, it's a special projectile. So like I was saying earlier, like how Gamma Blade is, how Eno's HCL is, Flick, the Seal Stunnage, all those things. It's the same way. So I can't QV it, it just goes through. Which is really strong considering how it's really applicable and how it's generally used. So first and foremost, you summon it, it comes this way. You can hit it any way you want. It interacts with Stinger and Cargo the same way. When it hits the balls, it will create new balls. Oops. So do stuff like that, as you would with a normal ball on screen. It will also get bigger depending on how many balls you have off screen already. So let's say you have two balls, right? And you do it, those balls get absorbed to it, and then you can see it's a much bigger ball. It lasts longer, it does more hits. So you see, I'm gonna like 
four soul hits on that, and with just two balls, I got like way more. And of course, it becomes bigger. We're gonna see it way longer with that. With all four balls, that becomes this huge thing. This becomes like a max level ball. Hits hits real fast, recovers even faster. As the ball gets bigger, it moves faster. Uh, not moves faster, it recovers faster when you hit it. Really good for those situations. And the primary situation you're going to use it for is like end of round situations where you can you want to get the last hit in, but they're kind of too far. You can do like all kinds of stuff. Create, the, create you can really create havoc with this. I'm being bad right now, but like you can do like a whole bunch of stuff and just like create a lot of havoc on the screen because again, it's a special projectile. They can't like use their own projectile to like nullify it. They have to. If it goes towards and they have to either like FD, block it, or just get out of the way. So that really causes opponents to scramble a lot when they see it on the screen because they normally you're gonna do it when they're at like um, like low health situations like this or maybe even lower than that. Like when you're like at that end and you want to get those last few hits, right? But you're like across the screen, something like that. You summon the ball, go nuts. It's it's very good for those situations, getting those last hits. Because people don't like really anticipate the way the ball is going to get hit. Because you can hit so many different ways. You can use normals, stingers, carcass raids. Um, using conjunction with meter, you so you do something like save a ball out. And do stuff like that. And all that kind of stuff. Really good for that use. You can also use it for like chip sequences in the corner. So stuff like that. I don't. I never learned them to be honest because they're like, they're like pretty involved setups to do, and they're like a lot of steps, a lot of like sequences you have to do it in. In earlier versions, you would see people do it more because it did do a ton of tier damage. But through the how they buffed Dark Angel to do more chip damage and more meter drain, so there's really no reason to do that other than you just want to do it because Dark Angel is it's easier, more effective. You get better setups off of it. And you don't really see Bishop run out used in those situations as much anymore. Because if you do the sequences right, they can't jump or do anything. They just sit there and hold it. So it's really just a matter of you setting yourself up to like improperly execute something. Whereas you can just set Dark Angel, set it and forget it, and then do something a strong mix up off of that already. So primary use for Bishop run out, very good, special projectile. You're mainly gonna want to use it for like to create havoc at end around situations, because it's very good for that. Um, okay, that's all the super specials and all that. Um, basic pressure, just go over some other stuff real quick. Basic pressure for Venom. Let's see, let's do everything. Let's just have him crouching. So really, the, let me get some water real quick. I'm talking a lot. <sighs> Okay. So really the most basic of pressure is like I showed earlier with Carc in the carcass raid section is like any ground string really into carcass raid. Oops. Oh, I'm fucking up. It's so like anything, any one of these in the carcass raid is like good. If you want to space out the H carcass a little bit, you can do that as well. And the stinger reset maybe, the ball set like that. For the most basic of basic stuff, just string into carcass. It's applicable whether you're a new player, a top player, been playing just now, playing for years. You're going to be doing that. It's very good, very basic. And also, like, string into wires, stinger wires. Thing. One thing I forgot to explain on stringer wires, I'm glad I remember now, is that to get it off of a block string, you can't just do it instantly and get a stinger wires because that's just not how YRC works. YRC works in the manner of them, the opponent not being in hit or block stun. So I can do that and get a ball. But if I do that, I get RC because they're in a block stun. Whereas not block stun, they get, I get the RC. And of course, if I do it too late. I guess can't really do it with that. If you do a late cancel on your RC, you draw RC, or your RC, otherwise, you get the PRC. All that to say, is that if you want to get the YRC off of this, 
You have to hold it a little bit. Because remember, you can hold Stinger, right? So they get the YRC off the Stinger. You hold it for a split second, and then let go. Okay, so if you're doing off a block string, that's why you have to do it. See, yeah, there I fucked it up, right? And I got RC. There I did it too late, I got through RC. There I did it just the right amount of time, and I was able to get it. So you hold it, you hold Stinger, release, and at the same time, YRC. Takes a little game used to, not the hardest thing in the world, and like essential for Venom. So you're gonna have to learn that no matter what. And why do you want to do this in pressure? Because Stinger YRC, this is H Stinger YRC by the way. S Stinger you can do as well, but it's like not as strong for like the purposes. You can still do it, but H Stinger is definitely the preferred one to do. Because it, it also acts like as a frame trap when you do it this way. Because you get them that split second where they're like thinking, oh, maybe you're going to do something else. Maybe you might ball save, my carcass raid. Uh, maybe I can jump out, maybe I can press a button. And in that brief moment, they do something and they get tagged. And now you can get a combo off it. Or they try to jump out, you can tag them and get a combo off it, so on. So, Stinger YRC in pressure, even just besides the pressure reset, if they press a button, like, oh, I press the button, right? If I press the button, I can, I can combo them now. So it's good as a frame trap, good as a continuation of pressure. Uh, good for, like, confirms, or just, just the RC in general. So, if, like you said, so you get Stinger RC like that, you can lay confirm it like that, get into whatever combo you want to do. And it's good for that. So, general, Stinger RC and strings, very good for continuing pressure. And frame trapping. On top of all the other things it's good for. Okay, so next up we have two more sections. Basic combo with Oki and basic BNBs. Um, so let's get into it. Basic combo. You see me do it a bunch of times and just uh, showing stuff. But like, ain't Gatling into 2D. Doesn't matter if you're. Nard fan six twine. Doesn't matter if you're Pepper Splash. Doesn't matter if you're Fino. You're gonna be doing this. It's very relevant at all levels. You're gonna sometimes only be able to do this. Oops. Sometimes other combos are just not possible. So you have to do something in the 2D. And in which case you can start basic pressure. Like I showed there with the SP combo. Or SP until so your confirms, or you want to do like a, a K, K ball Oki, you can do that as well. Very basic, very important. You're going to be doing it no matter what. So don't act like, oh, like I'm, I don't want to learn this baby combo. You're doing a baby combo no matter how good you're at this game. You're going to be doing that combo, and you're going to be getting a lot of mileage out of it. And you're only going to continue to get more mileage out of it as you get better at it. So it's something you're going to need to learn. Um. Next up uh, for a basic combo, just a basic throw combo. Oops, basic throw, uh, not throw combo. Basic um, standing combo, which will work universally. So close slash, close slash, all three hits, jump cancel, jump S H D, and you land six K, six H. Excuse me. So and it's very basic. Will work on everyone standing. No issues. Doesn't matter that particular one. The way. The way I ordered it, it's like slightly delaying, but that will always work. So if I just do it like quickly, you'll see that it's a little more finicky that way, right? So if we time it, the the oops, one two three S H D six H, you time it in that certain uh certain manner, that'll work across everybody. You don't have to worry about Oki, okay. or you don't have to worry about people falling out or getting the ender or whatever. You go just add two K. No, by itself, it's like you're just gonna be like running up 2k to do pressure anyway, as a general thing as Venom. So getting used to getting those hits like that will be important. So you gotta do like raw uh, close slash into that, or 2k close slash. Either way, it works. It's fine. Basic standing combo. Get your basic Oki into JS. Do that. Doing this more in like more advanced. Mode. If you hold back on this initial port. 
Initial part. Before that JS hits, if they burst in that area, it will you will block the burst automatically because you're holding back. You see on my stick, I'm holding back when I do that. Before I press the S. If they burst in that very specific part, and it, you will block it automatically. So it's like a built-in OS. Um, this will also work on characters where you can do three hits of close hatch on crouching. So Potemkin, Bedman, Coom, and Leo, because Leo works on hit, not on block. So all the big bodies, you can do that on, as a crouching hit as well. And on the on the big bodies in general, you're not going to want to do these IID combos because they just tend to be more finicky. No, sorry, not that. I, no, I'm thinking of a different combo. Never mind. Sorry, figure out what I just said. Because that's a different combo coming up that I'm going to get into. But yeah, you can, you can always do this on the big bodies if you get the hit. Because they crouching, they hit them. Um, basic crouching affirm. That should work on everybody. This one I showed earlier. Which is close slash 5H. It's not that Close slash 5H, the KQV. Into the combo. 5K, 6P, ball hit, 6H. Basic crouching combo will work on everybody. Um, because again, that guy showed earlier the BMB. Well, oops. Well, you obviously would want to do that whenever you can. The air dash portion can be finicky depending on distance and character. So, if you want to like eliminate that altogether, you can. You can usually always do that, and that will always work. And then of course you get the K ball Loki with off of it. From this particular one, because you go far, you want to do. JS is the hit, not JK. Generally, if you get closer hits, you would want to do JK. If you get like farther knockdowns, you go on to JS. As a general rule of thumb. Um, basic combo for throw, like I showed earlier. Micro dash close slash and the QV. And then, depending on whatever QV you want to do, you can get different Okies. You can do like KQ. I do this, I do this pretty often, fairly enough. KQV into Charge Stinger, and then you get a, a mix up like that. You can do HQV if you really want to get fancy with spin stuff. I messed up again from earlier, but you can do that kind of stuff. And the micro dash is important because on my characters, like for Jam, for example, I think there's another character, but I can't remember. But like Jam, for example, if you just do, oops, if you just do this, that QV will whiff. It will not hit her, just because that hurts her. Our box after works out. Like Venom will work for them. So, if you want to make sure it's universal, just a little dash. That's what I gotta do. And then air throw. I showed this earlier. I'll show it again. Universal air throw combo. Close slash H ball. 6P, 6H. And that will always work. Okay. So, that's a base. Those are basic combos. Again, I use all these combos regularly. A lot of good Venom players use these combos regularly. These aren't like uh, beginner baby combos that, you know, Venom's first combo. You're going to be doing these combos. These are stuff you're going to be using regularly. It's just these are easier versions to do as you learn the harder combos to do. Next up is our bread and butters. These are the ones that you're going to be grinding out. Once you grind out, you're going to be, will make you a much stronger Venom player just because what they have to offer to you. So, as I showed earlier, close slash, instant air dash, 6H, and You have to instant air dash off of the close slash. If you happen to not know how to instant air dash in this game, most air dashing games, you up forward, you can do it two ways. The quickest way is you up forward, return to neutral, and then forward dash. So, if you look at my inputs, try and do as clean as possible, you see that. You can also just jump and forward dash twice if you want to. Yeah. Doing it the 956 or up forward, neutral forward way is the quickest way, is the least inputs. But if, if you just have a hard time doing it, you want to do it this way, where you just jump up forward twice, you can do that as well. So you jump cancel the last hit of the close slash and do it. So this is me doing it with the 956, the up forward, oops. Up forward, neutral forward. Talking to his heart. That's me doing it that way. And that's me doing it with the neutral jump. 
So you can do it either way in the combo, it works just the same, no real difference, up to whatever your personal preferences. That's the basic combo. You can also do an extension with the running jump. I missed it there, but you can do the extension where after you do the first JD on the initial combo. Oh my god. So after that point, instead of just going for the 6H, you do running JK or running JP into the string, the air string. So you do either JKSHD or P instead of K. P, doing P instead of K will sometimes add more stability. So if you want to just default to that, you can. Damage wise, is not really all that much of a difference, so you don't have to worry about that part. And then you end it with 6H and you get your Oki and you get pretty strong corner carry. Let's see if I can get one. Sorry, my brain is like fried right now because I've been doing this for a while. One more time. There we go. So they get the okay with that, and they're basically at the other side of the screen, almost damn near in the corner from the starting of the corner. So you got a lot of screen carry for that. Um, the other standing close slash combo I want to do is into QV. Into that. This can be more character specific, so sometimes the QV, the, the jump kick after the QV hit won't connect. So you guys just see what it works on. It's not, doesn't work. This is what I was referring to with the big bodies. This does not work well in the big bodies, just because they're like really fat and heavy, so it's hard to get those hits on. So big bodies, you know, uh, Potemkin, Coom, Bedman, don't do those combo com on them because it's just really awkward to get. But most everyone else, it will work pretty well on. Ideally, you get the running jump like I just got right there. It gives you more distance. That's a running jump. For reference, this is the without the running jump. As you can see, you get a lot less carry off of it. And a lot worse positioning when you want to do your Oki. You're probably going to do a mid screen with a PQV. Um, you could do it with like SQV, I guess. There is a thing with HQV you can do, but I'm not going to show it because it's hard. It's not really necessary. KQV you can't because you're gonna hit the ball. So it's like purpose. There's no purpose to doing it that way. So, but generally you're gonna use PQV just because like the general combo off it is this. I messed up just a little bit, but that's how you're gonna generally get the knockdown. Do K ball. Hit the. Uh, P PQV as you did earlier, as it travels to the position or the formation with 5P, running jump J, K or JS, and you're okay. That's generally you're gonna do mid screen. Corner, you're gonna wanna use HQV into that. Because if you do PQV, it becomes a problem where you're gonna hit, probably hit the ball and it's gonna mess up your combo. See that one, you're, you, that's just the messed up combo, you're gonna tech it and it's gonna be disadvantage for you. So in the corner, HQV, and to SP, no, that's up. Into SP, 5P, ID, J, K, and you get a really good, basic, really strong mix up off of like a basic interaction. So that's one, let's move on. I think I got, how many more combos do I got? That much show off, two more combos. And then we are done. So the basic, Crouch confirm is when I showed earlier already. The close slash into 5H, into SQV, ball hit, into the IED. This is like, takes a lot of getting used to this this part of it. Because I have to learn how to instant air dash off of the 5P. And it's a very l low hit stun move, so it's difficult to do. So that's something you just have to grind out. It's very important to learn. Um, and then you get, you get your IID combos off off of crouching that way. You could alternatively do just curl slash. You don't necessarily have to do the, close, the 5H. So that's like a variation you can do if you're like if you're like this close, right? Or like certain characters where if you do, oh, I'm messing it up, but certain characters where like if you do the 5H you'll into the SQV or whiff, where you make the S, uh, 5H 
and just do that skip you off the close slash it'll work um it's just a variance of it the real important point to get across is learning that because you have to learn that no matter what even in corner combos where i was messing them up earlier as well You're gonna have to learn 5P ID, 5P ball ID, no matter what. So that's just something you have to grind out, get used to it. It's very important, very good. Last thing I'm gonna do, last BNB I'm gonna show is the throw combo you see me do a lot. Crouching 2H, S Carcass Raid, into your ID combo. So after that, it's very important to learn. Um, it's gonna be good for. Obviously, corner carry is going to be good for. Actually, mainly just corner carry and, and gain to the corner off of your throws. This is mid screen. And you get the extension, which is not that hard on it. You get even more corner carry, like I showed you before. Yeah, corner to corner, just like that. The only real, like, hard trick to it is after you gain a throw, you do the 2H and then just immediately. As you're doing the 2H, you're, that's your starting charge time. So that's something you gotta get used to. Is little takes a little while getting used to. It's not hard. Just you have to get used to it. And once you do, you get you open up your Thor game so much. You get the corner carry and all that. It's very very good. You could also do close slash into the ID combos, which works uh, better with some characters and not as well with some characters. Like for Slayer, for example, like. That combo doesn't work as well on the throw than 2H just because like the added hits make it more awkward for him. But the added benefit of doing off of this is like they think you're gonna do a close slash so you can bait like a burst or something. And like it varies up the perception of what you're gonna do. Oops. So like I could off the close slash you can really just do that. Or or like whatever like that. And then also like just hard bait like that. As well as doing the throw combo. Whereas with 2H, you can't really do the jump cancel like that. So that's the that's like the trade-off for doing 2H or close slash. You get a jump cancel, but also like less consistent rounds to do combos on. <sighs> Alright, so that's everything I wanted to cover with Venom. For those of you that watched all of it, bless your hearts. I hope this helped. Um, just some brief resources at the end, of course. Um, the dust loop page has like a lot of this information I went over already. Of course, like if you want to get into the nitty gritty of the frame data, it's all there. All the properties, hitboxes, and then we want to check all that stuff out. Sorry about to recovery. All that go on dust loop is really well maintained. The list of pages. For some, I'm gonna include these resources in the description, so that way it's just gonna be listed there. You can click on it once you're done with everything. For videos, the the premiere videos side to go to for match footage is keeponrock.in and it's like a Exer match video database that has, has stuff going back years and years and years and the good thing about Exer with two point with ref2 being released like 2017 is that you have like five years of match footage from like top top players playing that you can go back to and watch which with Venom specifically, from Ref 2.0 to 2.1, he didn't change like all that much. So even the Ref 2.0 videos, you can go back and watch, and it'll be really applicable. Even like the Rev 1 videos, they're like always things will be different, but like the neutral formations and stuff, all like that neutral aspect will be useful to you as a Venom player to watch. So keep on rock in for as a video database on YouTube. There's two channels you should probably follow for just like the art. At this point, they're both like. Not really active because you know, um, through COVID, Exerd's activity in arcades went down a lot, and it's now it's pretty scarce. Although I will add some other arcade streams that have Exerd, but mainly around one and follow M De Silva. She's uploaded a uh, a bunch of stuff from like the Mikado streams into like segmented videos where like it's specific characters. Uh, specific players, specific characters, like playing through certain sets for like a long period of casual play. So like it's more targeted than like the other general Mikado videos you'll see on like Twitch or YouTube. And on the flip side of that, there's Jonio's channel, Jonio's uh, channel, 
who streamed all the Mikado stuff. So he has years and years of all the Mikado archives uh, on his YouTube page. That goes for casual play, um, single tournaments, 3v3 tournaments, special events like special first to 10 sets, which all those are very, very good. Um, and all kinds of things. Those are all archived on his channel. So that's Jonio's channel. It's like the general one you want to do. Just have like all the raw footage. And like Silva's channel is the one you want to go to for the like targeted specific. Oh, this is this player playing for however long they're playing on stream. And you can like just get their matches if you want to just get that. There's just various arcade streams as well that will stream. Um, that will include in the description. The main streams, honestly, at the moment, there's not a ton of like dedicated Venom streaming. I, you see, I will put my stream link in the description as well, because I will, depending on the amount of time I have, I will start streaming around when rollback comes on. Um, also, I'm taking this time to plug myself. Please follow this uh, YouTube channel and my Twitter as well, because I do, even if I won't stream, I do upload sets quite often for this game and for Plus R as well. So those will be updated, uploaded as I get them. I'm going to try to be more active on it with Exert as well, with the added rollback. So please, if you like what you saw here, subscribe to me. There's also FC, who is a very strong Japanese Venom player, who is very active and playing still. He plays on console PS4 in Japan, which is still a lot of people play. You'll see a, a lot of good high-level match footage from him. I'll include his YouTube. Cause he, he mainly YouTube streams, so I'll include his channel in the description. Uh, players to watch in general through like match footage, streams, or whatever. For Japanese players, um, the only currently active one is FC, but there's a ton of match footage from the past from Fino, Isamu, uh, Sato, whose name is 310310, Sanma, Paco, and Keiichi. Those are like the main ones you'd want to see. Fino and Isamu are like the top of the top as far as uh, Venom players go. Isamu probably the best Venom player throughout all of Exert in my opinion, because he's just so fundamentally strong. Fino, on the other hand, like, obviously people will call him number one as well if they want to, and that's perfectly fine. If someone will offer you, like, really strong application of neutral, real simple, effective setups. Fino has, like, all, like, the high exclusion Venom stuff down, all the strong setups down, just really general strong play. He knows his good options. Sato, 310, uh, Lab Monster, there's tons of old streams of him just like labbing on arcade, on the arcade setup when you someone to play. Very, very varied in the setups. Has a ton of tech. Sama, just very fundamentally sound player. He plays, I've always described him as playing basic Venom very well. He'll just do like the good things. FC, he is also like kind of, recently he's gotten more in like a variation of setups, but he also just does like the good Venom stuff well I and mean, he plays as a strong neutral game. Uh, same goes for Paco. You might see him as Paco OG San or Maximum some other name. Uh, just very good very good presence in neutral I'll say like similar to how Fino would play. And Keiichi he was like up and coming for a while he got he got good towards like the end. Um, just another player to watch in Japan. For North America I'm gonna put myself out there because I do think like watching my play has a lot to offer players. As I've, uploaded, I've learned through Plus R that all the sets I've uploaded, people I really appreciate seeing that kind of low Venom play from me, and I can offer that in Exeter as well. So, again, please subscribe to this channel as I will be uploading stuff. Please go to my Twitch, twitch.tv slash hirsch191. I do hopefully intend to stream. Um, but otherwise, North America, Peppery Splash, probably the best player. You know, probably is the best player, even including Japan, Japanese Venoms right now. He's definitely number one Venom. Uh, Really complete playstyle, super strong neutral game, has all the tech down, very good execution, amazing reactions. He will do all the good stuff from Venom you want to see. Black Snake is another player you can watch. He is very like reads heavy, like likes being controlled neutral a lot. Um, very very varied on setup, has a really strong like mentality of counterplay, which is not something you really see from Venoms. So I recommend finding matches with him. Ryan Hunter as well. I think he's going to be... I don't know if he's going to be playing Venom. Because I'm thinking when uh, Plus R roll... Not Plus R. When Exit Rollbacks gets up. 
He said he might try other characters, but he will stream, so add him to the streaming list of players you want you want to stream at. I'll, add him, I'll include him in the list as well. But yeah, Lab Monster knows very smart, very knowledgeable. And then just like ran out other NA Venoms. You have Take Onase, which is NorCal Venom. He's really gotten good over the years. Pazu and Swiggin are probably like the two like up and coming Venom players in North America. They've been getting better over time too. So you watch out for them as well. And as far as like European Middle East goes, the players to watch to try to get a match from there are Miri, who's like very, very solid player, very good neutral, very good decision making. Garen is just a good player all around. And Badur was also a very just good player all around. Uh really goes in on all the tech. And Miri and Garen are Europe. Badur is Middle East. I don't know and then their plans to stream. I'm sh I'm confident Garen and Badur will play the rollback. Miri, I'm not sure. Because I just haven't seen him play recently, but I imagine he would as well. Um and that covers it up. I will include Discord links to both the Venom Discord and the General Exer Discord. But yeah, once again, please subscribe if you like what you saw. I will be updating, uploading match videos after this one in both Exert and in Plus R. Follow me on Twitter at Hirsch191, on Twitch at Hirsch191. Thanks for watching, y'all.